Like his grandfather, he's got some tales of Manhattan. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. It's your man Amanda. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grant? That's right. Handball, Brian. These people are functional idiots. Mike August is going to phone in, God willing, because he had something happen to him at an airport on an airplane that I've never heard of. What? Never heard of it. He's taken a lot of flights. In all my all my travels and trials and tribulations, I've never heard of the situation that Mike got into that got his flight canceled. Did oh. he try to fly with the with the baggage under the plane? He got onto the plane. Well, it does involve some of that. Oh boy! Because Mike often will have a, a self inflicted uh, wound <laughs> that will uh, cause these things. Well, I won't give away too much, but. Keep in mind, good call, Thank Paul. Deep cut. That's all I know about him. All right, so uh, it's been a lot of a lot of early morning uh, airport calls. It started uh, last Friday with a six a.m. flight into Springfield, which meant uh, get to the airport at five, which meant uh, get up at four. Mm. Had a few four clockers. Mm-hmm. Uh, then when we flew out of Springfield, it was a late show. It was a great show, sold out, had a lot of fun uh, back to the hotel, you know, midnight-ish. Now, Chris and I were off to New York City by way of Chicago, Ooh, ah, and yeah. um, Mike was heading back to the West Coast, but there was no straight flight. He had to go from Springfield to, I think, Denver, and then uh, out again to uh, LAX. So Mike's flight was nine o'clock. Ours was seven, seven thirty or something like that. So uh, we took off early. Mike uh, du- dutifully and Chris dutifully Ubered there early and uh, checked the bags. Oh, Mike wow. and I drove in like fifteen minutes later. Mike was going to return the rental car and hang out before his flight. So Chris and I got there and we got off okay. Uh, is we, the Springfield, Missouri airport large? No. I don't, I don't mean, I've I never mean, heard of it. Can, I'm from that area. It makes sense that it would be small, but you never know. Never heard of it. Not not big, not a hub. Like Burbank-ish? Hard to get there directly, hard to get out directly, right. not going to New York or L.A. out of there. you got to go to Denver first, or you have to go, in our case, uh, you got to go to Chicago. So we were traveling around, and I was checking in with Mike. You know, we'd land in our layover in Chicago, and I'd go, you on the plane? Have you guys uh, you taken off? Are you boarding? What's the, what's the schedule? Mike uh, began to tell a tale that I've, I've never heard before. I, I can't believe it. I just this. have one question. Is he still in Denver? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, well, we'll, 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 uh, we'll unpack it this way, and I hate when people say that. Mike? Yes. Yes. God damn it. Oh, no. All right. Oh, so, dear. Mike. I can't believe I'm having this conversation again. You're, yeah, Mike <laughs> is a uh, snake bit uh, when it what comes to flying. What has the United Airlines got in for me? I mean, this is, it, it's turning into harassment. I've got to get Garagos into this. So, <laughs> hours, of fo- well, hours of footage on the air of you blasting <laughs> them and the mask mandates. Garagos could have. I could have easily, easily ended up on the internet on Sunday. That's how, that's how bad a day I had. I, I got to I could have been one of those, those, those captions on the internet. What are you Cooping doing to him? Ships yeah. on passengers dream to go to Denver. <laughs> That would have been the caption. <clears throat> so your flight, <laughs> if memory serves, was out about 9 a.m. out of Springfield, right? Yes. I dropped you and Chris off at what time? Six in the morning? Six, for your seven. seven o'clock flight? Because yeah, I'm a hero. Six. That's right. That's you right. You are. But Beautiful. I took that's the right. rental car back, filled it up, came back to the airport on that strip, you know, that long road, that country road. I got that thing up like 120 miles an hour. Oh. Fantastic. Mike driving it. Uh, Dodge Challenger and shifting the automatic automatic. the entire way. (laughs) Grabbing gears, man. Uh, Yeah, that, by the way, if you count this morning, this will be my third sort of sub 5 a.m. wake up call to go to the airport. Today's 
Today, I don't what even know how you're on two feet. You what, can't have a vocal cord left. My schedule. Left after we, do that. we, I, <laughs> when we meet at four thirty this morning, uh, Chris in uh, New York City. Yeah, yeah. But oh. by the way, this all it comes on the heels of doing shows yeah. at clubs right. the night before. You're it's not tucking not, in at eight thirty. No, but uh, quick. Yeah. What day is yeah. it? Yeah, oh, I I was driving home there, but I said I, I don't, I'll tell you what day it feels like. I can't tell you what day it is. You know what's funny? You don't look that tired, but your hair looks tired. Thank you. It, it's not as it usually has more spunk. Yeah, yeah it's hanging on barely. It, it doesn't. It it doesn't have the gusto <laughs> I have. It I, have gusto. You don't look tired. I had a schedule that was so insane in New York. It was like down to every minute, running back and forth to podcasts, Sirius XM. Uh, Fox TV, then back again to do some podcasts on the other end of the island. I mean, it was it's no sightseeing. It was it was your a, schedule looked like somebody just blacked out a piece of paper. Just took a piece of paper. It's like filled it all with black lines. It was redacted. It was <laughs> full. Yes. Every minute of the day, you were talking to somebody. I had this thing where my schedule was so insane, and I don't think people realize it. there's not a half hour for lunch or right. space in between. There's, there's just minutes from here to there. And whoever's interviewing you doesn't know and doesn't care and just wants you to be on Dance Monkey Dance. Well, that was so funny because I ran into a lovely lady who you've probably seen on Fox a few times, uh, one of the nice ones. Not the uh, Judge Janine type. Oh, sure, yeah. And I, she I ran into her when I was leaving one of, you know, Gutfeld or something. She's like, oh, you're you're in the building. Can you do my podcast tomorrow? And I'm like, my schedule is I would, insane. They love yeah. to. It's insane. And she goes, well, you're coming back to Fox to do this show the next day. Can you just swing by this pod studio? It's right next to the... And I'm like, hey, yeah, well, I don't know. And we ended up working out, but I was like... 15 minutes, dead nuts on, I'm getting in a car, I have to do a podcast on the other side of the island, and, and I can I can do it after I do Fox and Friends or whatever it is I'm doing, but, but you literally have 15. It is 15 minutes. And she's like, okay, 15. We got to about 20 minutes of the interview, oh and she said to me, Bonus. Adam, what are your goals? Uh-uh. And I said, in the car. I just Make said, the next interview? to leave this dreams? podcast. <laughs> I just said to leave. I have to leave. Like, I'm sorry. That's probably not the answer you're looking for. But we're now minute 21. My goal is to leave. My goal is to. Uh, she literally will. We'll find it somewhere. That's right. It's. It's. I think it's Janice Dean's podcast. I don't know if she put it up yet, but we'll we'll find it somewhere. She's the nicest woman in the world. But she said, "What are your goals?" And I said, "To leave. I have to leave." <laughs> Did she at least laugh? Yeah. Then she goes, one more question. No! <laughs> I was like, I, I have to leave. I hate I'll doing it to people. Answer. I tell people all the time, if I had time, I'll talk for an hour. But I got to go. But anyway. This is one of the few areas I can commiserate with you on. Because when I did the book tour for, for my book, the publisher schedules you to within an inch of your life. To the point where they're like, okay, there'll be a car waiting outside the building. When you're driving from whatever, A to B, you're going to call into this yes. AM show. It's like, oh, yep. my God. Yes. I've never talked so much in my life. So now that leaves Mike. So mm-hmm. Mike's got a 9 a.m. flight. Chris and I have a 7 a.m. flight. What could possibly Land in Chicago about uh, 8.30, trying to try to find a, a Chili's or somewhere to <laughs> sit out. We got an hour, an hour and a half layover. I call Mike, and Mike tells me a tale I've never heard before. Let's hear it. I'm strapped in and ready. Go ahead, Mike. So. Get on the needle jet. You know, you get on that regional jet. It's the long, thin thing. One seat on one side, two seats on the other. You know, it's just a, an hour and a half. We're going to skip out of Springfield to Denver. I'm on. I'm in the front of play, like row three. You know, I've been sitting around the airport since I dropped out of and Chris off for almost three hours now, two hours. I'm just beat. Literally go to sleep. Just get in the inside seat, you know, the uh, window seat, and I'm out. And... I'm so out that I, I hear the crackling over the microphone. I, I think maybe we're already airborne. You know, sometimes you just are already out. Oh, the sure. plane's already up. And the, the, this is what the announcement was. Uh, due to our inability to extract the pilot from the restroom, what? we're now going to have to deplane the airline. Oh, the no. Airplane. What? Like, what? Oh, dear. What? That's a... That's a- this is not you know, real. You know, He's distressed. And it's like, it's like, I just I come I just come awake and to my left a white comes by and there's a 
a guy in a vest and he's got a crowbar and he's walking off the plane in disgust. Right? What? They couldn't even crowbar the pilot out of the, the bathroom. He's stuck in the bathroom. And they can't get him out. They've been working on it forever. How long? I don't know. We all have to get our baggage, get off the plane. Right? This is well, not okay. so everybody. Well, question number one. Even on 737s, those are flimsy doors. They couldn't yeah, break. Usually they have plenty inside. Question, question number two. They have to get them out eventually. Like, it was a folding door. Couldn't they kick out? Like, I didn't even go back. I have no idea what the door was. Well, situation. if they kicked in the door, they would have knocked out the pilot. Well, off the plane. But everybody you, off the plane. You break the door down, you can't take off oh, in that plane. Right, there's right. no door in right. the bathroom. <laughs> and there's no extra flights going from Springfield to Denver. That's your plan. There's no extra flights at all. Springfield has nine gates. United has two of them. And, like, a plane comes in every three days. I mean, it's, it's, you're nowhere. So that plane's got to get fixed, right? Well, so we're, so and also, the plane, if they, but if they get the, the pilot out, gate, right? if they get the pilot out, he's so mortified, he can't fly with you. Oh, well, yeah. He has to go out the back door. So we, we get off the plane, go to the flight gate. As I arrive at the flight gate, there's the pilot. He's talking to the gate agent. I'm like, because I recognize him from before we went in. He was just, you know, and he's covered in grease. He's his hands and his feet, and he's got grease all over him. Grease. And, he, and, they, and, he, and he's like, I'm going to the bathroom. I'm like, well, I'm following him. I got to find out what's going on. <laughs> I follow him in the bathroom. They get trapped he in went, the bathroom at the airport. It doesn't even have a door. That's, right That's how know. bad my <laughs> luck is. Sorry. Yeah, go he ahead. went through the trap door of the of the bathroom, the trap door underneath the bathroom, you know, in the bathroom, picks it up and goes into the cargo hold and goes out through the cargo hold and comes out of the plane down where they put the baggage in. All right. Wait, now, wait, first of all, there's a trap door in the bathroom? Oh, you've never yeah. seen executive yeah, there's, there's decisions. You've never seen the in the of the plane. <laughs> but Lisa, not I know needle jet style. Yeah. It, it, they, it's utilized yeah. in movies yes. quite often. Where is it? it? It's on the floor. It's probably a panel on the floor. Yeah. And you can yeah. remove it, although it's got to be pretty grody. Sometimes behind the uh, toilet. Uh, maybe under the sink. Like Depends on the, 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 the Well, oh my in executive decision, it was up top. <laughs> in Con Air, it was down at the bottom. How you know, be they'll, on top? they'll move it around. <laughs> okay. So top, top deck. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh my God. So, he crawled out yeah. the trap door. He crawled out yeah. the toilet. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So now. Now I'm in the bathroom with him, like, and I'm like, this has got to be the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you, right? He goes, oh, it's going to get weirder. I said, why? He goes, because I don't know what we're going to do. I said, what do you mean? He goes, if we don't fix that door, there's not going to be another way out of here. You're not going to get another plane. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? First of all, why can't you fix the goddamn door? How hard can this be, right? So now they make the announcement. We all go back outside, and they announce, okay, we're going to get the technician in, because they've just been using the, the flight crew guys, you know, been trying to fix it. The tech's coming. Because, of course, it's Sunday morning. The tech's not even there. Oh, no. Right? Whoever techs those planes is at home in bed on a Sunday morning. You probably have one. He probably works six days a week. Now the poor bastard has to come in and fix the plane. So that's like, now it's like 9.45, 10 o'clock. We just sit around, sit around, waiting, waiting. At 11 o'clock, they, they make another announcement. After an hour of trying to fix the plane, we regret to tell you that the laboratory door is uh, out of commission. This plane is now out of service. <laughs> Couldn't everyone just promise not to go to the bathroom for an hour? That that's, I would like to live in the world where someone like, look, we're going to put it to a vote. Can unload everyone the just airport. offload right yeah. now? If you don't, if you can't do it, don't get on. We the got plane. a one-hour flight. Can exactly. we do this? But I mean, the can't. jokes are flying. People are like, first of all, the pilot. Thanks, Corey. Thanks a ton. You know, you really shit the shit the. You know, it was just it was just nonstop. So, so do you live really in good about it. Do you live in Springfield now? <laughs> He's the mayor. <laughs> We're looking like I would. So. It now, well, wait a minute, is, wait a minute. Now, next? hold okay. on, hold on, Mike. Because now I'm sitting in the uh Chili's <laughs> 2 to with sure. Chris going, Oh my god, oh my god, what's next? And then Chris and I have to get on our flight, so I go, Look, I'll, I'll check with you when we land in New York, and hopefully, you'll be in the air by then. And then we go to New York two hours later, and we land again. I call Mike. He's still sitting at the oh, airport. Nice. He's, he's seething now. We're you debating <laughs> renting a car and going to somewhere, yeah. Chicago, something. St. Louis. 
Oh, people are bugging out. I mean, one guy rented a car, drove to Fayetteville, Arkansas to fly out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're definitely just because they know they're they are not getting out of Springfield on that plane. But finally, as I started like following Corey around, Corey the pilot became like the biggest celebrity you'd ever seen in Springfield because we're hanging on every word because he's on the, the cell phone to dispatch. So he's he's the one who's going to give us the information. And around about twelve thirty, he he's on a phone call. He goes, "They're going to scramble a plane out of Houston. They're calling it a rescue plane." Wow. It's going to leave Houston at 1. It's going to get here at 3. You guys are all going to get... I'm going to then fly that plane. We're going to fly everybody to Denver. Great. Except for the fact we've all missed our yeah, connections on right. Denver no now. Right? Yeah. right? Right. So going to Denver sounds great, but not if you don't have a flight out. Right. Right? So now everybody has to get back in line. Right? In, at, the, at that same gate and get rebooked. So it's like 50, 60 people now line up all over again. And the same poor bastard who probably put you and Chris out at like seven in the morning. It's now like twelve thirty one, and he hasn't he has not left that gate for six or seven hours now. He's had it. He's like a young kid. You can just tell. He's just, he's past caring. He's all by himself. So the line starts, and it takes him. I I, I get at the end of the line just sit down. It took him like an hour and twenty minutes to get everybody rebooked. Right. I'm the last one in line. I step up. And I mean, and he, his eyes are just like kaleidoscopes by this point. <laughs> I said, okay, I, I need to go to LA. What do I got? He goes, oh, you're going to be fine. We're going to get it, get you into Denver by 430. You're going to get a 930 flight uh, out of Denver. No problem. You'll have a, you've got like a five hour cushion. So you're good. I'm like, okay, so here's my boarding pass. What do I, I get a new one? He goes, oh, no, no, no. Just hold on to that one. It's, it's, it's going to be the same flight. I'm like, no, really? I'd like a and new one. And that's where I should have. Ask the next question. We're like, okay, you know, he's tapping into the computer and looking at it. I just trust him. All right, I'm good, right? Yeah. Put the boarding pass back in my pocket. Plane shows up. I get on the plane. We fly to Denver. Get to Denver at like 4.30, right? Mm-hmm. So get off the plane in Denver. Go to, go to the gate agent there. Go, okay, I got a 9.30 flight, I'm told. What gate? And I'm at like gate. B-74, and she goes, oh, yeah, that flight is uh, B-29. Yeah, 9.30, no problem. So, okay, so now you do what you do, right? You kind of, it's like on the other side of a very long terminal, because those terminals at DIA in Denver, they're like a mile long. So I'm like a half mile away from the, the new flight gate. But you want to get close to it, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I make the trek with the bags and everything all the way down, get near the gate. And so I go to gate B-29, and I, I hit there around five, and it says Redmond on the, on the flight gate. And I'm like, okay, well, there's got to be, it's four and a half hours before I go, so there's going to be another flight to Redmond, Washington that'll come together. And so I'm not, even, I'm not even asking questions. There's nobody there. And so I go and get on kind of a ledge, like a platform above the gate where you can kind of hang out in seats and plug in. And I really don't, I just start, I get online, start, you know, just going back to work. Around six thirty, six forty five I look up again and it still says Redmond on the on the flight gate thing. I'm like, isn't this Redmond flight ever gonna go out? What's going on with that? I I come back, I go back to work, come back like seven forty five, an hour later, I look up again and it still says Redmond <laughs> on the goddamn flight gate thing. I'm like, This is what is going on here? This this flight has had it already happened. So I pack up all my stuff, go down there, flight gate is empty. Go to the gate next door, 28, where there's a gate agent. I said, what is going on with this flight B-29 to Los Angeles? Where, where, why isn't it come up yet on this flight gate sign? And she taps her thing. She goes, oh, that flight's been moved. Oh, boy. Like, oh. what do you mean moved? She goes, airport. oh, that, that, it's moved to gate like B-66, all the way on the other side of the airport where I came from. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. But 930? She goes, yeah, 930. I said, okay, look, here's my boarding pass. Can you just you know, check in, check me in here? And she takes my thing, and she does her tapping. And she goes, you're not on that flight. Oh, my God. Uh, like, huh? What do you mean? No, goes, wait, Mike, where I, was I? Was, uh, I? I checked in again when we were in our town car going into Manhattan, right? Or I call you <laughs> right? from the... I, yeah. would kept, yeah. I kept checking with Mike, and I was like, how far into my day? Because I have <laughs> drinks with Mike Lynch to celebrate the book. <laughs> then we're going out with the publisher to Gallagher Steakhouse right. that night. Am I going to keep calling Mike? Is he going to? And you got to set this against the backdrop of us walking back from the club at midnight. 
and Mike being out front at 530 in the morning in the rental car to pick us up. Like that was a no sleep night he's coming off of. Yeah. Sorry. Keep going. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So it's now, you know, I'm I'm like 15 hours in this odyssey by this time. And she's telling me, you're not on that flight. You're not, you're not, you're not even in the system. So I'm like, are you the guy in Springfield said that? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? No, what? <laughs> and she's like, listen, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. So we'll just, can't you, can't you book me on that flight? She goes, tap, tap, tap. That flight is full. Sure. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, full, full, how full? Completely full. full? All the way full? <laughs> kind of full? You know, I'm, I'm literally like, I'm starting to lose my mind that now I'm going to be in Denver for the night. You know, now, now I got to get out of the Denver airport. And, so she goes, well, look, here's what you do. It's early enough. Get down to that gate. Get on the standby list. You know, just do what you can while you're still here. So OJ Simpson, in his best day for Hertz, could not have moved <laughs> faster than I got from B28 to B64. I mean, I mowed over kids, pets, people. It was in, I was a blur because I was just like, if anybody gets in front of me for the standby list, I mean, if, if I'm not fast enough and somebody gets a step of me, I'm never going to, you know, I'm going to lose my mind. So I get down there, and of course the flight is full, and so the chick, you know, gets me a boy, not a boy, but she gets me on the standby list. I'm three. I'm number three on the list. And it's like eight, it's like 740 or 750, whatever it is, eight o'clock, from the 930. I said, well, in your experience, what, what are my chances? You know, you, you do this for a living. You see standby yeah. lists, full planes. She said, I really can't tell. You, there's just no telling. It's all in, you know, impossible to say. Well, just give me an idea. Just uh, give me some odds. Not, nothing, sir. I can't really. I just, I'm just trying to get rid of me. And I'm just, so I just said, sit down there and wait. I just got to hope that some pilot out there poops in somebody <laughs> else's plane and gets locked in and they miss their flight. You know, it seems to happen a lot on United. Rolling. Right? <laughs> so... And, they, and then as all these passengers show up who have tickets, you know, you're like really pissed at them because sure. yeah, they're getting sure. out. You know, you're like <laughs> snarling, <laughs> just yes. like you're so angry. And so the flight comes and it's fully loaded. And they just keep coming and coming and coming. They load the whole plane and she goes and she announces a standby list. And she goes, we will have, we have room for three standby passengers. Oh. Mm. I was number three. I got the last row, middle seat. Yes. I was never happier to have it than <laughs> that day, I can tell you. What time did you land at LAX? 11.30. That's oh a long my God. Day. And you don't live close to LAX, Mike, for the less idea. Well, yes. I, I was yeah. done with my steak and had gotten back <laughs> into my Manhattan uh, hotel room by then and was probably asleep. And you feel owed, like, like on your behalf... August, I want you to be compensated, but like, who compensates you? Yeah, you know, you're no owed one. something. Where's your pound of flesh, Corey? No, it's, <laughs> you're just you're so grateful just to get on the plane at that point. I mean, you, I was so happy that I didn't have to you know do it anymore. You just don't care, but you're right. I mean, it's just the problem is we have so few planes in the air and so many people trying to fly that if you get pulled out of the system, you better start asking a lot of questions right away because just don't assume. They're going to have something for you because they don't even try. I mean, that guy in Springfield hung me out to dry. Yeah, he, he was so you. done. He just would, he literally just, he wasn't even lying. He was just like, I don't want to do any more work. Just keep that boarding pass. You figure it out when you get to Denver. And I didn't until the very last minute. I was lucky to get saved. I'll uh, tell you, you I'll, I'll tell you where the real heartache is. The real heartache I've, I've experienced personally through these types of uh, odysseys and situations is, at some point, you come home, your wife is uh, on top of the bedspread watching TV, and then uh, you go, God, what a day. And then she goes, you think Tell you had a day? Tell me about it, bro. <laughs> your girl knocked over a bowl of Cheerios. It yeah. was all over the kitchen floor. And you let's not let's not That's equate a, your yeah. day <laughs> with, with my stories. day. <laughs> let's not equate your day with having to deal with a Jehovah's Witness for two minutes at the front door at noon he with wouldn't what take the no fuck an I went through. <laughs> wow, Mike. That's what an what an horrible. odyssey. Now I'm afraid to go to the bathroom to in the airplane. This is unbelievable. Well, it was kind of funny because 97 and a half percent of the time you me and chris are on the same flight but somehow we broke off to go to new york and your mojo wedged that door shut Mm -hmm. you know what i mean chris doesn't have bad mojo on flight so you gotta wonder if chris 
would have been going back to mm-hmm. L.A. if the his mojo would have outweighed your negative mojo. Yeah. But, oh, my God. And, yeah, all I could think of is I'm so fucking glad I didn't go back to L.A. and have to deal with that flight. All right, oh, Mike. You would have had quite a day with us in Denver. I mean, in Springfield. It would have just, <laughs> you, there's just... You wouldn't have made it. You, you would not have made that call. day you in Springfield Airport. I, well, too much for people must have just been getting plastered in that airport. Oh, they went to the bar. I'm telling you, by the time, like, noon rolled around, they'd been there for, like, two and a half, three hours. They were singing. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were making Like an friends. Irish pub. They were getting into fights. <laughs> they were breaking into the cliques. Break you know, make uh, you know, Insurrection was forming to <laughs> kill the poor kid by the counter. Oh I saw God. all the, the ugliness of, of humanity in that four-hour window. Ups, well, downs. Well, Mike, at least uh, we got to go by Springfield before before this. Before we <laughs> died. Have ourselves a time. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Sorry for it. Right, sorry, but it, it makes for it makes for good content. I was laughing the whole time I was talking to Mike. Chris, he he wasn't on the phone, but he could see from my face that uh oh, Mike's up. Uh, what else? Now this. I mean, he spent twenty five minutes talking about it. Can he at least write off that ticket? God, you'd... we just did a whole quarter of a show about it. Please. Yeah. All right, let me. Well, I think I'll write it off anyway. Okay. Let me tell you about Simply Safe. Today's episode is brought to you by Simply Safe Home Security. We believe home should be the safest place on earth for your family, and I use and recommend Simply Safe. It's a great product, very sleek. Batteries last up to 10 years. You can put it all up yourself. You don't have to have a guy tech come out and drill holes and pull wires. 24-7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe's agents dispatch police or first responders the moment a threat is detected, even if you're not home or can't be reached. Just a buck a day, no long-term contracts. Named Best Home Security of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report. Third year in a row, by the way. And you can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. It's Simply Safe. There's two eyes. SimplySafe.com slash Adam. Go there today. Get a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring at simplysafe.com slash M. Well, I have a lot of stories from the road, yeah. including a crazy one from last night at the club. Brian ran into a celebrity. Oof. I'm We can save that. I'm intrigued, and we'll do that right after this. Adam Carolla's sixth book and audiobook. Everything reminds me of something. Advice, answers, but no apologies. A quick tangent on hookers. First off, we keep changing the language to make it sound better. Whore gave way to hooker, which gave way to prostitute. But now we've moved on to sex worker. Like waiter became server and stewardess became flight attendant. I actually think this is a downgrade. If my daughter were to choose that livelihood, I'd rather her be a prostitute than a sex worker. The latter sounds very unfulfilling. Sex worker makes it seem like she clocks in at the sex factory or goes to her cubicle at the sex corporation. Taking it in the ass from nine to five until Mr. Sexley pulls the chain on the quitting time whistle. Everything reminds me of something. Available now, wherever finer books are sold. Thanks for ordering the book, everyone. It's doing quite nicely. Fucking better for the amount of fucking shit I did for that goddamn New York. Oh my god! Now New York was New York is back one hundred percent. I haven't been there in years, yeah. maybe three years now. I don't know. It's been a little while, but it is hustle and bustle. The streets are crowded. People are moving. Good. Businesses are restaurants are full. Like it is. It is. There's a lot of movement in that city, and you kind of. You know, I guess you kind of get caught up in it in a in a sense. It's it's the whole thing is like some sort of jazzercise class or something. You get outside and you go, "All right, we got to get moving too," because yeah. everyone, the eighteen short blocks away, is moving. And although I did have this guy, I I had saw a couple guys, Chris. I don't know if you saw this, but it is it is kind of a free for all out there in terms of crossing when the signal is red and mm-hmm. just. It's every man for themselves, mm-hmm. and it's every man for themselves when it comes to pedestrians, and it's every man for themselves when it comes to drivers. They'll try to make that turn, even though there's there's a little gap in the pedestrians. They'll try to thread the needle. 
I saw two pedestrians. One guy. They both seem like like veteran Manhattan Street walkers, and I don't mean that. Oh boy, like oh, prostitutes. No, there was one guy. One guy, there was a parking garage right outside my hotel, and he was walking down the sidewalk, and he was in, he was coming the other direction, but he was about 18 feet in front of me, and a car had pulled out of the parking structure, was pulling out onto 44th Street, and it pulled out a little bit, and clearly traffic was coming, and he and he inched back like about six inches, but the guy who was walking on the sidewalk was walking right behind it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The guy went to a full fucking spasm, but he said something that I thought was interesting. It was like typical, you know, I'm walking here, I'm walking here, like <laughs> r- real Rizzo, New Rizzo, Yorker. When he said something was funny, when the guy pulled back, he went, really? <laughs> really? It was like, yes, really, yes. douche. You're in Manhattan. It's fucking two in the afternoon. It's a jungle and a sea of cars and people going and walking and all these petty cabs now zooming yeah. by and all the delivery guys on all their bikes and all the motorized scooters and all like motorized skateboards yeah. and stuff. You forgot there's a million different things with motors on it now in that city just buzzing by. And this guy moved back a little bit. He was befuddled. He didn't make contact with the guy he he went from a foot away to six inches away and then he stopped and the guy was just like really really and i thought that's such a weird choice <laughs> yes. of words to express yourself it indicates you can't believe which is happening yes. when there's tons of context around uh, there's you tons of it and then he got another like f- f- walked another like five feet and like turned to the driver's like motherfucker oh, you know God. and it's like he had an axe to grind when he left the house live that day here you yeah. work here this must be a daily occurrence yeah. and then there was another guy crossing i don't know avenue of the americas or something and someone was turning left and they like stopped and that guy did the real oh okay okay so that's like, good that's a thing. hands waving around like got another 10 feet turned around for a second dose and it's like oh i see people are driving people are walking and there's no real hard fast rules it's just everyone's trying to thread the needle why is this the consternation. You know, that's the part. Like, oh, my God. Like, the disbelief. Hey, this is how we do the, it in New York. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it was a billion degrees. Uh, yeah. It was like 101 with big time humidity. And the worst part of New York in the summer when I used to live there is when you walk on the street, everyone has a, an AC unit mm-hmm. and the hot air blows right onto the oh. street. It's like so dirty oh, and the- hot. Now there's one of those falafel carts uh-huh, every eight uh-huh. feet, and they got the compressor going, yeah, and you sure. just walk by this plume of heat as you're going. Like it's hot enough, but you're being it's those, someone's beans. holding like a hair dryer on yeah. you as you're walking. But so I I doomed and damned myself uh, at the show last night, which was at the stand, which was. Um, I guess it's a newer club. I've never played there yeah, before. Down in the basement. Mark Norman was up on stage. Shane Gillis, what Sam Morell. Uh, it's on 16th Street between whatever. It's kind of right okay. up, right in there. And it was uh, sold out. And, it, and it's in the basement. And it's a, it's a new, updated club. It's, cool. a, it's a newer club. It's not like a broken down club. They've got a nice restaurant up top. Everything. Cool. I was going to wear <clears throat> the dark blue shirt I wear I wore the entire trip on stage but I had this kind of salmon colored linen shirt that I'd packed with me my thing is I'll pack a few shirts and wear the same shirt all the time mm-hmm. but I thought you know why not wear this shirt so last night I'm up on stage it's uh, I'm a summer yeah and I've it's been dragging this thing along summer. and I thought you know I'm gonna do something I've never done done before it was a little crinkled and wrinkled i was at a very nice hotel and i was like i'm gonna have him press this nice. shirt la, la, la. and then i'm gonna wear it up on stage Throw i usually like, just hang it in the bathroom when i take a shower <laughs> and uh i did it and i got it right before i was leaving the room but at some point i stopped i the shirt got handed back to me i was gonna leave for the club in five minutes and i like stopped and i went i wonder how this shirt reacts to moisture in that, there's some shirts, you put a little splash of water on the sleeve and it 
you can't really see it. Mm-hmm. It's a slightly darker version of the dark blue already. Mm-hmm. And then there's some shirts, like lighter color shirts, like a light green shirt or something. You will just pit out. Sure. In you know it's, it'll be dark circles in the armpits. Do you remember hyper color shirts? Oh, I loved hyper color. Yeah, you get a you drop of water in certain yeah. shirts. It goes totally all hyper color yellow. Yeah. And I was like, well, it's a brand new club. We're in the basement. We're not up on the third floor. Right. And uh, they got some air pumping. I don't think I have an issue. Wear your I'm, new fancy shirt. I'm just gonna wear my new fancy shirt. Uh, well, we got out on stage. And it all went well. It was normal for a while. And then it started to get hot. Oh, no, broadcast news style. And then it started to get hot. God, I haven't thought about that. And then the power went out momentarily. What? And then it got hard. Too good. Now, Chris, you were there. I, yeah. The air conditioning was on and stopped being on. Yeah. So they they were blasting the air conditioning before the show into the room. So it was a it was the perfect temperature. And then once the, the room started filling out, um, th- we're also in the middle of a heat wave. And now and this this is a full restaurant, and they have another club upstairs. So now they're just b- full blast and everything. And I heard they uh, they they were trying to work the dishwasher. <laughs> And the second when they turned that on, the lights started flickering, oh, and then Answer everything, that. everything just blacked How's out. How's a Mexican gonna blow the circuit? I, oh, the the <laughs> device. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah there's oh, a the machine. machine. No, oh, yeah. Okay, the sorry. Machine. Keep going. So yeah, yeah so the the whole place cuts out. Like at the the mics cut out, the recorders, everything, and now we're just in a dark, super hot room. Ugh. Like this is it's not. I can't even really explain how hot it is. It's just if you if you walked into the room, is it like you got punched in the face with just warm, wet heat. And people stayed in there? No, not yeah. a human left. Wow. I was looking Dedication. out in the audience. Everyone was fanning themselves with drink special cards. You know, like, just, hey, oh. fan me. No. Oh, and I don't know. Maybe if you pull up on my right sleeve there. Well, you'll, I, I have another picture. Oh, okay. You'll see of the, the sweat dream. is just drip. Ah, that's <laughs> real? Yes. Oh, it, it looks like you dunked your arm in a tub. <laughs> it looked like I was bobbing for apples with my right arm. It you literally, were like at a summer cookout, like going for a beer at the bottom of the cookout. It literally started shit. dripping. That's great. It dripped down my armpits and filled oh, both sleeves with sweat. God. It was so fucking humid. It was 101 outside, but it was humid <laughs> And I, I just kept thinking, I said, oh, thank God. I thought, oh, we well, you get a little schmitzy on stage sometimes. You know, I was, like, was soaked. That's you, absurd. That's disgusting. There like was, he was dripping from his cuff, like on stage. There's not <laughs> a dry spot from mid upper arm down. There is no, it's not an optical illusion. No. We'll put this up at abacurl.com. It is wow. literally just a soaking, God. sopping, oh. wet. God, that's so gross. You got to cut the sleeve off, though. <laughs> You yeah, gotta you go gotta burn the shirt. <laughs> by the way, I was going. I, I was. By the way, I all I've done, all I did was work from eight in the morning. It's now ten at night, and I'm like, God damn it! I'm going out for a good goddamn Italian meal tonight. We're in New York, New York City. It's my last goddamn night. I'm going out for good. My Steve shirt was clams. completely drenched as I finished finished the show. Now, who's going to let you into the restaurant? Nobody left. Chris, you didn't see anyone leave, did you? No. It was weird. they were just we were an, we got about an hour and fifteen in, and it was like I, it just cannot take it. Yeah, I I, I would leave it anymore. every once in a while because there's so many technical difficulties. I had to run to the sound booth and everything, but you would just see the the servers and the bartenders, whenever they would leave the room, it was the biggest sigh of relief <laughs> that they had to leave because it, it was just, it felt so good to just leave that room. It was even hot in the hallway, but just going from that room <sighs> to the hallway So how incredible. long were you stuck in the dark? That, what I noticed, and I don't, I don't know if we capture or not, but I feel like I had a really good punch on a joke like a punch and as i was doing it the mic went yeah and it just kind of dulled on a funny punch i had and i remember going is this sometimes you think it's the cable yeah. or something and then the lights started <clears throat> to dim and oh, then no. yeah. once the lights went out then we're all sitting there in the dark but they still had like auxiliary lights on. You have to yeah. have emergency. Yeah. Like yeah. on one of those submarine movies where the main lights go <laughs> yeah. off, and but the they're red auxiliary. Lights come on. Yeah, it was kind of that. I was like, I am so goddamn sweaty. And I'm, I'm thinking, like, where I think we're, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes in it's at that point. In, yeah. And I was like, can we just call it a yeah, night? Didn't you? Uh, no, because then it came back up. Yeah. Came back up again. Were you wearing an undershirt? 
Yeah. You couldn't strip that vaporize situation <laughs> off and it was it was so go full Archie Bunker. <laughs> it oh. was so exquisitely so hot that I couldn't even feel <laughs> the amount of sweat that was on my sleeves. But it, at some point, I think Shane Gillis just went, "Hey, man." <laughs> Look at yourself. Like, everyone was just looking at me because I'm looking at the audience right. and I'm holding the mic and I'm animated and I'm yelling into the mic and I didn't I didn't stop and really take an accounting <laughs> of, the of what what I'd done. But I'd sweat. It was a loose fitting shirt, so all the armpit and shoulder and back sweat was just dr- going right down God. like a toboggan down my sleeve, yeah. and it Whoa. just there was not a dry spot from my cuff from my wrist mid bicep the 18 inches up uh, and yet your your throngs of fans <sighs> still allowed you to touch uh, them the people were coming back with like sleeveless pie, <laughs> pie. No, there was like there's like women with sleeveless dresses back yeah. there like let's get a shot i was like i can't put my arm around it. it's gonna gross you the oh, fuck out oh i get out. it me too you're afraid of getting canceled <laughs> Yeah, but it was wow. brutal in there. But it was a great show. The guys were real funny. And the, and the crowd, I mean, it's probably New York audience kind of thing. If that was, I don't know, the Irvine improv. But I think a lot of people would have got up no, and well, said, Stanford, we're getting no out of this question. kiln. Where nobody left. That's they awesome. they would start just start fanning themselves. They hung in. Like, I, I, I called it about... I don't know, hour 15 yeah. in or something. I was like, this is, uh, we've, we just, I'm out of salt now. I got no more salt in me. <laughs> the electrolytes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Brando. All right. So uh, that was that. Poor, felt really bad for Lynch. You know, Lynch, Lynch is the nicest, most sincere, earnest guy in the world. And we went out and had a drink at, in the lobby of my hotel at the bar. And then, hey, uh, Mike, he's talking about you, you fuck ass. <laughs> we were going to go to Gallagher's, which is that steakhouse that has all the steaks and the glass and everything. Mm-hmm. It, Aging. It's awesome. Old school, New York, mm-hmm. exactly what you want. Went there with Jimmy in like 2001, ran into Adam Sandler and Winona Ryder. Together? I think they were filming like Brian? little, little. Little Mikey or little Dicky or Shannon? little Nicky or, or what? Oh, no, no. Went. I think he was doing Mr. Deeds. Uh, that's she right. was in that oh. and he was in that. Okay. And I guess they were filming. That, it makes sense that they were filming that in 2000. Or it came out in 01 or 02 or something in there. Boy, I, the one talk about a resurrection with Adam Sandler. Yeah. I mean, that. He's playing serious roles now. A few Killing. years ago, it was like a, it was like a joke, yeah. right? Now it's like he's serious acting, he's serious roles. Deeds was 2002. So it must have been 01, and they were filming Deeds, mm-hmm. and that's the last time I've been there. Anyway, we're walking down, you know, real busy Manhattan kind of uh, sidewalks. Everyone's moving and kind of threading and navigating, and Mike walks by this guy, and I guess his hand is swinging and hits this guy. He's got a plastic bag, and he's got, like, two bottles of white wine in it and it's a younger gentleman of color and the bag hits the concrete both bottles oh, break no. and the guy does this thing where he's like hey man look what you did did it really and, really and, 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 right and mike's like I- i'm sorry you know but everyone's just packed in yeah, and yeah, yeah. Sw- arms are swinging and you know it wasn't mike's fault and the guy's like i was delivering this now i have to pay for it and and Mike's like, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And the guy's like, well, what are we going to do? And Mike's like, I, I don't have any cash. And I'm well, what are we going to do? And I'm like, oh, God, because I know the only, I, I hate this, but Mike, Mike's such a sweet guy. He fucking hates it. And it's, Venmo. A, it's a sort of a hate crime, yeah. you know, modern yeah. day. Scan his Venmo. And, QR code. and he's like, Mike's like. I will I will show you my wallet. I will open it up. I do not have any money. And the guy's like, well, how are we going to make this right? And I'm like, I got to jump in. I just said, we, I, let's just do the move where we start walking. And we did. But for like three blocks, I was thinking, I wonder if I'm going to feel the back of that broken bottle <laughs> like in my, in, a, in, in, in my lower back. Like I really thought... I've seen so many crazy videos of people in New York just coming up behind people yeah. and cold cocking them and everything. 
that for the we just it was dark. You know, I like turned my back. We started walking, but I was like, "Is this guy coming back for his pound of flesh with these two weapons you've just created, Mike?" But uh, thankfully, we were able just to uh, move it on to uh, Gallagher's and then uh, Drew and his uh, wife Susan, and you know, meeting us there in New York. Such a people go out, yeah. they walk, they cab, they Great. Uber. It's like they they eat, they they talk, they laugh, they drink. It's just uh, it, it, if you love Mary. that. Yeah, it was uh, it was a it was a fun trip. Now it was. Oh, let me interrupt. Also, to your point, yes. you're kind of dancing around. I was like, "Oh, you're a New York company, or you know, let's get together. We help mm-hmm. happen to be in this place we don't normally come to." Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. Maybe not so much for Drew. He has a place that we know what I'm saying. Yeah, it was uh, it was an excellent time to be uh, be had. But my schedule was so <laughs> packed and insane. You know, when you're eating and you're drinking and you're like, I get up in a few hours and do a radio tour for two and a half hours. It was it like... cuts into the merriment. Mm. Yeah. You guys tell me this. I had another situation where I wanted to end the interview. Oh, boy. But, you know, I want to be tactful about it. Sure. But... Um, like saying, what are your goals to leave right now? <laughs> That kind of tact? I don't know when that goes up, Chris, but we can you Yeah, can it's not find that it. yet, but yeah. Um, I the, think you'll love it. The, Speaking of one in the interview. <laughs> I had, I started off Monday morning, uh, the day after Mike broke the hearts and bottles of many of the people who live in Manhattan. Um, it was like they were all at the table drinking, eating dessert and stuff. It was like 11 o'clock and I just went, I got to bug out. I got an early morning. I got a radio tour. The radio tours. No, I got a radio show before the radio tour, and then the radio tour is two hours plus, and then the podcasting then the begins, starts. and then Fox, and then Sirius XM right. begins, and blah, blah, blah. And we were, uh, I got, so when you do the radio tour, everyone's got eight or nine minutes, and then you always have the guy who's running the tour, because you got to get through 23 radio mm-hmm. stations, and... That guy's on a clock, and that guy'll chime in if you get to eleven minutes. Go, hey, we got to wrap this in, into to the producer, whatever, because we got the next one. And if that one's late, that one will get bumped. So um, we got to the last one, and I'm like, okay, well now I d- I've been doing radio for three hours from my hotel room, and uh, now there's going to be a car, and I got to hustle out to Sirius XM and blah blah blah. The last guy's going. And he's going, now we're getting into 15 minutes. Mm. Now we're getting into 20 minutes. And it strikes me, oh, he knows he's last. Yeah. And now the guy who's running the show will get on there and berate anyone who's in the middle for going long. But if you're last, the guy who's running the show, is he's done with the last one. I'm not done. I have another eight hours of press to do. But that guy who runs the tour is done. And this guy gets... It's about minute 21, and he goes, all right, here's my all-star comedy lineup if they were a basketball team. And I'm like, all right. He's like, I've got Chris Rock at small forward. Then He worked on this. Wow. You know, Henny Youngman is uh, playing a power (laughs) forward. I. I, you know, he's, he's got, Burl at center is tall. Yeah, he's got, he's putting all the yeah. comedians. Yeah, we had Louis C.K. playing point guard. And he, he goes, he goes painstakingly, goes through the whole lineup mm-hmm. of, of his powerhouse starting five in stand up. Did he ask you on the spot? To and do then, it? He, then he goes, now who's yours? Oh, Jesus and he Christ. worked on that shit all week. <laughs> and I go, it's, uh, it's exactly the same. Yeah. It's the Coincidence. same team. Genius. It's the same team. And he goes, well, get out of here. And I go, no, seriously, it's it's yeah. it's the same team. The, just as you you said it. Maybe and he Kevin goes, Hart at point guard is a shorter guy. <laughs> he goes, that, you're bullshitting me. Like, you don't want to do this. And I said, check my website. It's on my website. I, this is mine. As a matter of fact, I think you ripped me off. That's and good. he's like, oh, this is bullshit, man. <laughs> I'm like, That's good. I want to go. That's I have to go. We're 21 minutes in. He thought I was a huge dick. But that was a long answer past the 20 minute mark. And it's also a complicated question you have yeah. to think out. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like a strategy question. And like you don't, you don't ask someone off the cuff. No. And he, he clearly worked on that. And he could have taken what you said as a compliment. Like you guys are so simpatico. Yeah, he knew what I, he yeah. knew. 
<laughs> he knew where, where I was. Uh, where I was. Oh, the other one, and I'm glad Chris could hear this. Chris just reminded me on the screen, but I'm glad you were there. One of my many, oh, you just did Fox and Friends. Could you just slide into this studio over here and just sit down for just 10 minutes and knock this thing out? I was like, you know, my thing is, look, I came here to do press. I, I'm, I was told to shut up my entire life mm -hmm. by every school teacher, counselor, and family member and friend I ever had. The fact that you guys are on pins and needles wanting me to come in and just sit down for 10 minutes and pontificate into your microphone, I'm flattered. Yeah. Like, I get it. And I also get what you're doing. You, I'm here. You want to do this. And it's, it's not like... Oh, I'm going to Tavern on the Green with Alec Baldwin, and I've got to be there. Like, I'm doing nothing. There's no lunch. There's no schedule. There's no breaks. There's no anything. And, yeah, okay. So I said, no, but, but this one is interesting. So the, the woman's not there. She's remote. Is and this part of the tour? Yeah, the, yeah. This no, was, not part of the tour. This not was part after, of the radio tour. Oh. Right, yeah. So we just finished recording a podcast with Gutfeld. Who uh, oh, which, right. will air, which will air soon, and then so. But after that was done, they pulled Adam like, "Hey, can we just have you for 10, okay. 15 minutes, just for a quick radio hit?" And they bring us into this small room with nothing but a microphone, a mm -hmm. mixer, like a computer screen. The guy just sets like puts all the settings and leaves. Yeah. Right, and then you put the headphones on. He goes, "Well, the host is in in another state, but she'll talk to you." And then so she just comes on to the headphones, and she's like, "Oh, hey, Adam, I used to live in the San Fernando Valley. I'm a." Big fan. I I, I, grew, I listen to Love Line all the time, and then, and then I moved out of out of California, like as you, as you have to do. But anyway, I just <laughs> wanted to tell you I'm a I'm a big fan, and I'm like, oh, oh thanks, I, I appreciate it. And then she goes like, oh god, she asked another question, like, how do you want me to? to oh yeah, how, she and she goes, and how do you want me to introduce you? And I go, oh, I don't know, just you know, I don't know author or podcast or whatever you want. I, you can figure that one out. And she goes, okay. She goes, what do you, uh, what do you make of what's going on in the world? No. I go, are, are, are we, we, are a we doing question. a show? Are we doing a show now? She's like, yeah. Oh. And I'm like, okay, well, to have a starting point, bitch. Like, don't go. So how do you want me to introduce, how do you want me to introduce you is an off the air question. Every, every single question, club you play, you know, when the MC goes, how do you want me to bring you out? You know, that, that's not, not on stage. It's not part of the set or every interview. She was, couldn't have been conversational tone. How do you want me to introduce you? I used to, I, I used to listen to you guys back then. Then she goes, and I'm like, and I've, I have, I have to do it frequently now where I go, are we, is this, are we oh, doing an interview? That's why she's out of market that's too. Right. You cannot do that to a guest. I'm, I, I've interviewed a million people on a million tours. These are off the air conversations. Hey, Adam, big fan, real quick, before we go live, that'll be in 15 seconds, we're wrapping up our uh, legal. Yes. What, what do you want me to call you? Okay, great. Here we go. Yes. So, Jim, that's you, it. you listen to a podcast, I do too. There, yeah. there are plenty not half, but like 30, 40% that do the rolling start where they're not like, hey, welcome to. It's like, oh, I've heard people, guests say, are we on? Are yeah, we, is this the it's show? Because it's because yeah, it's free. Uh, it's free form in their mind. Yeah, except for this is Fox and this isn't a podcast like. I'm, you know, over at your buddy's house and he's ripping a bong load or whatever. This is like Fox radio. I don't like it. Anyway, I still never figured out whether we started or not, but, uh, sounds is, like that was the interview. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Joe DeRosa comedian is here. Who's also the stand is his club, oh. his hometown club. And I was actually talking to the owner of the stand who opened up sandwich place with Joe Ooh. during the pandemic which was kind of interesting. Ballsy. And I also, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second. First, there is the Jordan Harbinger Show, a different kind of sponsor for this episode. The Jordan Harbinger Show is a fan of fascinating podcasts with interesting people. You should definitely check it out. There's an episode for everyone, no matter what you're into. Jordan talks with Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter. Or you can go inside the dark world of wildlife trafficking. You always find something useful to apply to your own life, like routine changes to boost your productivity or slight mindset tweaks that change how you see the world. Jordan's a good guy, interesting guy. 
It's been on the show. It's been on with Drew and I a few times as well. We enjoy the show, and you will too, so you can search it out. The Jordan Harbinger Show, that's H-A-R-B as in boy, I-N as in Nancy, G-E-R on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to finer podcasts. It's the Jordan Harbinger Show. All right, comedian Joe DeRosa, fresh in from uh, New York, and uh, happy coinkadink. I was just playing his club last night, so we'll get into it with him right after this. I never give less than five stars. I always give five stars. The guy could be driving against traffic on the freeway, firing a Glock out the window. I'm like, five stars. I don't know what kind of day he's having. I'm not trying to get anybody deported. He was probably a doctor where he used to live. I feel bad. I always give five stars, unless when I'm getting out of the car, the driver goes, give me five stars. Then I'm like, you son of a bitch. How dare you tell me how to one star. And I hope you send him back to wherever he came from. Where's the ice button on this app? Joe DeRosa on the Adam Carolla Show. Good to meet you, Joe DeRosa. Nice to meet you, man. Ships in the night. So you're out here. I was out in your neck of the woods for a few days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, during the heat wave. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know, you know. I'll tell you why it's 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 bad. L. A. Hey, look, it it sucks when it's hot in any any town. But you don't walk in L. A. You, you yeah. drive and yeah. you you have air conditioning. And in New York, one of my greatest loves is just walking. Just mm-hmm. like I, any excuse. And it's also it's so trafficy that well, it'll be faster just to walk. There's you know, and, and it's always beautiful. And now, <laughs> no, I know. I'm 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 thrilled that I missed it. And I'm actually, it's going into next week. I'm supposed to fly home tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I need to get a new car. Mm-hmm. I'm actually thinking about buying a car tomorrow here oh. and driving it home. Nice. Really? Just for the experience, but then also, too, that I don't get the tail end of that heat wave. Either. Yes. You know what I mean? Wouldn't it be nicer to just be driving <laughs> for four days instead of in 98 degree yes. it was, it was 101 yeah. in that that city i i woke up at uh, four this morning the hotel had one of those pads that says you know the time and the weather and it was 80 80 at 4 a.m uh, in in new york city i used to live in austin uh, only for a year like 20 21 years ago so it was a long time ago but that was one of the reasons I left is because I was outside one night. It was 11 p.m. and and there was one of those big, th- you know, thermometers. Bank were, thermometers. Yeah, yeah, and it said 94. And yes. I was like, this, for, I can't do this, man. This is awful. It was 94 driving back. It, what, it, what, it, what it is now is every single car has the temp on the dash now. So you sit in the back seat yeah, and, yeah. and it was 94 at 1030 last night driving back from <laughs> dinner after playing the club with the air conditioning crapped out. How dare you? How dare you Greta? make a joke of this? How dare you? So <laughs> thanks, Greta. Yeah. <laughs> it it went it so it went out during the show. The air conditioning. Jesus Everything. Christ! It oh, was. the power went out. Yeah. Yeah, the power went out. I mean, oh the jokes God. were so hot. I feel like it just <laughs> overloaded the system. But oh yeah, it uh, it was tough. And and what people don't understand, like when in in you know this and everyone in this room knows this the people sitting in the back fanning themselves with the drink special menu you're not under the lights right like Indeed. when you're up, that ceiling's lowish yeah. you're up on a 18 inch riser that lights only 22 inches above your head you are baking yeah. up there yeah it's it's so hot and then and then also too isn't it horrible when you see the people doing it yeah cuz you know like you know, when, when, when we, we used to work rig, real jobs, right? Like, you'd go into a job interview, and they would always say, watch your body language. Right. Make it look like you want to be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And when you see somebody doing that, it's like, dude, I know the AC's fucked, but come on, man. Right. Stop it. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, literally, you know? I, I guess I did a Groundling show a million years ago, and the same thing, small. But what it is that people don't understand is when you take, in that case, club holds 
110 people mm-hmm. or something like that. You take 110 people and you put them in a, you know, medium sized living room <laughs> and they live with their own breath and ass and pits and whatever mm-hmm. yeah. for 45 minutes. It starts to really get foggy in there. <laughs> but I would say, and you're right, if you're in the crowd, do not do, I had this at the ground, it's like second half of the show, it was hotter and balls in there, and everyone is just laying back and fanning. We can see you. We understand it's hot because it's hotter where we are, right. not only physically hotter where we are because of the lights, but emotionally. Right. You guys are laid back, and you're fanning yourself, and it's like, it's it's just one notch away from you yawning. Yeah. 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 Checking your watch. Like, that's how we feel when we see you on stage. 100%. And then you want to... I've never done improv, but that would really get me pissed because I'd be like... Oh, is it too hard to sit and listen? Yes. Are you exhausted? I'm trying to think of how the guy at this job you made me pretend I did. Right, I'm right. inventing a character in real time. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what a moil does, but thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> now you sit back in the shade and fan yourself. <laughs> yeah, the, if you ever do improv and you're dumb like I am and uneducated like I am, they will throw shit out. The audience is educated. Everyone in the troupe. The, so the example. number one thing I found from doing groundlings and stuff like that is everybody is very well educated and very well read. Mm-hmm. So when they say, you know, do it in a more in a Shakespearean right. style or something, mm-hmm. they'll all go, they'll slide right Give into me, it. Give me but, a location, Middle Earth. Yeah, all right. yeah. But they'll do Got this. Screwed. They'll do this thing where they go, all right, you're, uh, you know, you're moil and you're having trouble with your topiary. All right, here we go. <laughs> And you're up on, I'm 27, I'm up from North Hollywood. I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know what either I'll of I'll literally these take help with any word right now. Things I, are. I did improv one time ever in my whole life. And it was a show, it was when I lived here, they had a show at UCB where they made the comics do improv and the improv had to do stand-up. Oh, interesting. You did your own thing first. You got to do stand-up first, but then everybody role reversed. And I had to improv with Mary Lynn. Uh, Rice Cup? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I, this is how bad at improv I am. She, they were like, you're your Starbucks. Joe, you're a barista. She's the customer. She walked in, and I go, oh, you're the lady from 24. That's <laughs> right. how bad. It, it, I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> Yes, and <laughs> I think yeah. it would be, it would, but that's harder. I think it'd be harder for you to do improv than an improver to improvise that they're a stand-up. At least they have. I feel like stand-up's an easier thing to like. Like you're you playing can a make character. fun of it. Right. You could do right. it ironically right. in a, in a way. Yeah, if you're not in on the improv, then it falls apart. Yeah, because well, how long did you do it for? I started the Groundlings at probably 22, 23. I probably was ejected, rejected, or, or cut from the De- groundlings. Dejected. <laughs> dejected from the groundlings at probably 27. I, I probably had about five years in, but I had more classes outside of the groundlings because the groundlings would have a year in between classes and they'd go, you just take Mindy Sterling's class at the church on Highland and they're in the basement there. That's where I met. Get better. I met Philip the juggler in one of those. Like they, they, they'd let you take other classes for right. free you. but while you're waiting on your class to open up and you'd end up taking three or four in between each one. So it's like you, I took four or five groundlings classes, but 15 total because I took them all in between. What were, were, were you, uh, were there like other celebrity people, like, you know, now celebrities in it back then? Because the groundlings, that was like, that's sort of like a breeding ground for, right? I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah it's like a weird. Um, remember, I was telling you, uh, Jerry, remember the guy used to make, I'm looking at Chris, the, the toilet calendars every year? Jerry Collins, I think his name was. <laughs> you like go to these guys that are like where you know, remember when everyone was poor and people have parties at their apartment oh, and everyone would bring their own booze. You'd be and out of the balcony or the whatever, because that's the Smoking out on the balcony and Kathy Griffin had a place over here and it's like Go to Jerry Collins is throwing a thing, and his roommates Will Farrell, except for you didn't know who Will Farrell was, but right. he was. Uh, his roommates are real funny guys, tall guys. You, you're going to hear from him. Like he there was play a, center on the comedian basketball team, right? There was a lot of that, Elisa Kudrow, and and just just people like that. Alex Borstein screaming at Alex him in his own Borstein used to yell at me in my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, Jerry Collins used to put together a toilet calendar every year. It was oval, and it would go on the lid. So when the lid was up and you, know you were what? taking a piss, you could find out what no, day it was. was. <laughs> Why were you, um, as you put it, dejected? Like, what happened? You get to a certain point. I, it, I, you know, I There's think a it, skill level I think it's required. like, yeah, it's all politics. <laughs> um, no, it, it, it's, I like when people try to save themselves with, it's a popularity contest. contest. Like, oh, so you're not popular, popular. amongst so your peers? Nobody likes so you. So I would, I would liken it to sports where okay. it's kind of like you're a good player on your peewee football team and then you go to high school and you're like kind of a standout on your high school team. So you go play some junior college and you're pretty good. And then you transfer to a big school and you're not quite as good anymore. And at, sec- at some point they're like, who's going to the pros? And that's when you get cut. I, that's so crazy. Cause I, I, I thought that once you were in, you were in, I thought it was no. like a fraternity or something, but what, Excuse me. Sorry, I'm having a horse horse voice day. What um, w- at what age did you start to come into your own? Because 27, I mean, you probably weren't that far away from like the Man Show and all that stuff, right? No, I wasn't. Yeah, like so that's so weird. Like I feel like they maybe missed the boat on you. You know what I mean? Like, well, they weren't really into you know nurturing potential they were like what can you do for me now the, yeah. the sunday show is this sunday we don't want to work with your ass for three years to get you to see what you could or could not be you know? that's so f- oh yeah that's that's a shame I, Gar- oh, Groundley's a little bit like snl too as i understand it which is the best people don't like we hear about great people who didn't make the cut you know what i mean like right. didn't get on the show even though they auditioned like it's a proprietary algorithm for a lack of a better term like if you fit the mold or if you're what they're looking for or whatever it's kind of cultish if you're if you're in you're in and if you're not you could be great you could be bark Marin, be cut from snl Th- you know that I mean? yeah that puts it in perspective because you look like norm mcdonald is probably the best example of that where it's right. like they booted him off the show and then he became 20 times bigger you know, than, than yeah, I I was frankly pretty green, even though I'd done it so much. I wasn't that I wasn't that good at that format. I needed yeah. another format, and I, I left. And then we started the Acme Theater, and I sort of hung out there for like three years, and then then I then I got into radio. Nice. All right, there you go. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I I I have such admiration for. Anybody that did the improv stuff, I mean, and I, and they always say, they go, well, you know, it's not just, we're not just making everything, you know, you have, mm-hmm. I guess you have, tr- not tricks, that's, that, yeah. that sounds, te- that cheapens it, techniques, there you go. But it's still to me, I'm, I am blown away. They, they did that three part special on Netflix of improv. Uh, it was, it was Ben, it was the kid that played Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm vaguely familiar. But ben Schwartz. Yeah, Ben, ben Schwartz. Schwartz and who's Oh, yeah. Um, John Ralphio yeah, and Parks and Rec. Yeah, I watched that. It was pretty amazing. Oh, it was Middle Ditch, Middle right? Ditch, yeah. yeah. And, um, Thomas Middle Ditch. And I, I, I went on, like, I was on the Bonfire radio show. We, we even hadn't seen it. We were trashing this thing. We were like the audacity. Three oh, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not bonfire, but I remember the show. improv. Yeah. Who, right. the, who wants to watch this? <laughs> right. right. And then... We watched it for five minutes, and I was like, oh, "God damn it, they're really good. This is <laughs> like, this is really." And that's honestly when I really was like, "I actually have a an admiration for this craft that I was not aware of." You know, uh, I, I would I would liken it to this. It would be like saying you're an athletic guy would be like saying you're a funny guy. And then saying if you got a whole bunch of jujitsu training mm-hmm. and you're athletic. You, you'd be able to kick a lot of ass. Right. But even if you weren't that athletic and you got a lot of jujitsu training, you could kind of hold your own in like a street fight. And that's kind of what improv training is. Like if you're really funny and really trained, you'd be super funny. But anyone could have some decent ground game, you know, if you just trained at it hard enough. I, had, I did um, dinner theater when I first started out. It, w- it was a show called The So... Pranos, mm-hmm. okay. um, so they wouldn't get sued. Sure. It was uh-huh. just different enough from yeah. <laughs> Sopranos, I guess. I don't know. And it was because it was Tony and Tina's wedding yep. was like all the rage. 
Do you guys remember that? Yes. Yeah, interactive yeah. dinner, yeah. So all these other ones started popping up, and the, the one of the sort of bigger ones, I guess, in the tri-state area from where I was from in Philly uh, was The Sopranos. And I did that when I first started doing stand-up, and it was a great way to make – it was like 75 bucks for a four hour show or something, you know, but for me, that was amazing. It was a way to make money and it did help because you had to do table work as they mm -hmm. called it. You had to right. walk from table to table and interact with the customers. And it does, it helped me in stand up. How did uh, with, better call Saul come about? Just an audition. I've never been given anything ever, uh, ever. No friend has helped me. Chris, get him a water <laughs> just so we can break this fucking negative cycle of never a, a small a, it's a small one. Yeah, the, four ounce, the, the yeah, six ounce one. Yeah. But no, it was another because everybody goes, "You're a comic, right?" They put you on because of because uh, Burr was on, right? And your friends, I was like, "No, I, right. I auditioned for it," but I auditioned for it, and uh, and through doing the show, I became very friendly with Bob Odenkirk, who was very nice to me. Mainly Jonathan Banks, who plays Mike. He I was, have so many questions about Jonathan Banks. He's I the best. I would love to tell you anything you want to know. He's an amazing yeah. guy. I told him the last time I shot there, I said, uh, look, sitting across from you and looking into your eyes in a scene, it was the greatest acting t like lesson I ever got. And Because uh, it was true. It was like he, you look at him. And there's so, there's like a universe yeah. going on. You know, you know what I exactly mean? Like, who he is. Wild. In um, but he's he's really incredible, and he's been in. He's one of these guys with his IMDb is like 98 credits. That you, you know didn't right? realize. Yeah. Every time every time I'm watching something, I haven't watched in a while. Oh yeah, there he is. Right. Mike Ehrman Trout. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's in it. Right. Yeah. Like I'll be like, I'm watching Gremlins. You're in Gremlins. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, that's right. I was in that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh. He, uh, we're allowed to, cur this is a stupid, Please. we can curse, right? Go ahead. Oh, because I have a funny story about him. He go, we were on a plane flying back one time to LA and uh, I was looking at his IMDb on the plane and I was like, Jesus Christ, man. And I go, holy shit, you were in Tales from the Crypt? And he goes, yeah. And I go, what episode? And he goes, I don't remember. And I go, it's one of my favorite shows. And he goes, huh? And I go, wait, wait. I think I know this. Was this episode, was this in season six or season seven? And he goes, what fucking part of I don't remember do you not understand? <laughs> so it's exactly the same <laughs> off camera. Yes. But he, oh, the, the, awesome. The one different thing is he's like the, he's like a lovable grump off camera. He's a sweetheart. He'll he's take, a lovable grump on camera. Yeah, yeah. He'll take you to dinner, but he'll. Oh. He'll bust your chops. Oh, you know I what I mean? I love him so much. So but, but yeah. I, I was talking to the manager, owner of um, the stand last night about opening a sandwich shop with you. Yeah. So I guess you're from Philly. Originally, yeah. So you know sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Philly's a big, you know, they're known for, the cheesesteak is the famous one. But Philly's a pretty big town with sandwiches, cheesesteaks, and hoagies are the main. Hoagies, in my opinion, yeah. the main. Yeah, and tasty cakes. Tasty cakes, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Paul Italia, who owns the stand. During the pandemic, we were talking, and he just was like, "Everybody's abandoning ship in New York, but the survivors are the ones who stay." And he goes, "Now's the time." To, to, you know, it's a sad thing to say that as the city is crumbling, now's the time to strike. I don't mean like in 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 the sense of taking advantage of a bad situation. It just means that's when the window opens that you can actually pursue something. And <clears throat> he said, "If you ever had an idea, now's the time." And I said, very passively, "I always wanted to open a sandwich shop." And he was like, "What?" And I go, yeah, I used to think about it when I lived in L.A. I made this, like, menu of sandwiches. <laughs> <You know? laughs> nice. And he was like, let me see it. And I was like, I think I have it on my phone. And I showed it to him. And he's like, we're doing this as a pop-up at the stand. Uh. I want to do this. I think this is a good idea. Because the whole idea was these Philly-style sandwiches that you couldn't find in New York, eight of them for $8 a piece. And the menu was called the Hard Eight. We were originally going to call the store the Hard Eight. Mm-hmm. And then somebody told us not to. <laughs> <laughs> Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we did it as a pop up, and and we called it Joey Roses instead because we thought that sounded like a deli kind of thing, and mm -hmm. that was a nickname Burr gave me years ago, and would always call me that. And um, 
and that was it. People just reacted really strongly. And then the more they reacted, and especially because it was cheap and it was lo- we were locked down and it was like a cool like thing to get and but it, it's blah blah blah. And as it as it continued to kind of get attention and support, he, we started to talk about a brick and mortar idea, and we had a chance to get an affordable rent because oh, yeah. they existed yeah. for they were three seconds, literally oh. giving leases away. Yeah, and that was kind of that. And we opened the spot, and because we were opening it during the pandemic, the idea of keeping the entire thing affordable came into play. A bar where the top shelf was like. Twelve bucks, I think, is our highest price thing, um, and making the environment reflective of old New York. Very social. It says "Social Club" on the sign. Oh yeah, that you know, is it so is. cool looking. Yeah, where is that? It's on the Lower East Side. We're at one seven four Rivington Street, and that sign, you know, is is a is a mimic of the of the bar sign in Thief, the bar that James mm. Conn owns in Thief, because mm-hmm. we were looking at all the old movies and we were like. It's got to be like that. It's got to be like those bars where you feel like you almost feel like the bartender is going to put the whole bottle down <laughs> yeah, yeah. with the one. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you just I, walk in and say whiskey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was lamenting the last few times I flew at what the fuck happened to the bartender. Yeah. This now, to be fair, this isn't in Manhattan. I was in the uh, United Club, the airport, <laughs> and at the <laughs> airport. But I just mean I grew up with this sort of romanticized version of a guy, you know, you know, wiping the glass, who had all the sagely advice and uh, Make you know, something off the menu would do the looks like you could use a yeah. double pal, you yeah. know, like what's on your mind. This or, one's on the house. this one's on the house and sliding it and stuff. Yeah, I walked up. To, to the United, I, I got at a first class ticket this morning. Had a six thirty flight. Perfect. Got there. Got to the uh, United Club. Walked in. Walked to the bar. Six a.m. And I go, "Can I get a cocktail?" And the guy doesn't look up. He doesn't make eye contact. Doesn't do anything. He just goes six oh five. And he just keeps doing what he's doing. And I go, I go. 60605 and he doesn't answer he just keeps like <laughs> so messing with a, a, code with a bottle with and I go did you say 60 and he goes I said 605 wow and I'm like oh, okay this is not what I thought like growing up <laughs> wow. at all he's just there 605 now I'm like first off I know it's 6 a.m. but somebody implemented the five minute thing because they somebody got served it. 559 or something and there was a kerfuffle so then i'm like my flight's at 6 30 it's valuable five minutes one now (laughs) this is like there should be a game show called like are you an alcoholic like i'm like i should grab my bag and start making my way down to the gate but i got a first class ticket but they're boarding now but it's like 605 but what if I get it at six oh seven? Then yes. I just literally just shotgun it like and you in start front of mixing him. the Bloody Mary now, and at six oh five right. hands it over. So <laughs> he he just goes he bar- no eye contact, no nothing, and then some other folks start wandering up to the bar because they got the six oh five speech again. You show me where it is written that it's six oh five. It's fucking. It's six o'clock. It's six a.m. But it's so insane. No one else is on the schedule on that because they got an eight thirty flight. Mm-hmm. But yeah. so uh, we're all. So now we're all standing there, and I'm like, look at my phone. It's six oh three, and he's just walking past us like he like we're not there, just talking to coworkers like in the corner and stuff, walking past again, and I'm like. I kind of want to say to him, could we start now? And it won't hit my lips until 6.05. But he was already pissed oh, that I you. asked him what was going on. He just And there was a group that had, mm. you know, like-minded alcoholics yeah. had piled up yeah. in front of the, the bar. And he just was walking past. And, they, and at some point, it turned to 6.05. And he just was like, all right, what do you want? And then wow. it was this weird sitch where I was standing there first. But he points at the fat chick next God to me and goes, what do you need? And she goes, oh, I have a double bloody man. And I'm like, oh, you're ordering. You're ordering? I Do that move, bitch, where you go, he was here. You know what? The yeah. shit on here. Yeah, that first. sucks. But that, that is sucks. such the opposite of any fucking bartender I'd 
ever seen growing up. Well, number one, I love that you're in like the Ambassadors Club, and the guy's still you're, you're not still at the TGI douche. Fridays still in the airport. A fucking douche. By definition, and, I'm, and by, I'm a VIP. And by the way, put upon, mm-hmm. put you're the bartender. It's six oh one, and I had the temerity to ask for a drink when it, everyone knows it's six oh five, even though nobody knows it's six oh five. When we hired our bartenders, we told them you're allowed to do buybacks. Like that's huge because no bartender. When I lived in L.A. for six years, the one thing that pissed me off more than anything, not one bartender in L.A. ever once gave me a buyback. And Explain really, what that is to people who might not know. You know, you you've had four drinks. Hey, buddy, this one's on me. You yeah. know, the fifth one's on me or the fourth one's on me. It's like, because I also am an alcoholic. Yeah. Mm, yeah. All right. so, so I'm sitting there for a while. Let's, you know, I never got a buyback and it pissed me off. So when we opened the bar, we told the bartenders, do buybacks. Just, you know, you have to be, be friendly, somewhat conservative about yeah. it, but whatever. But also I said to them, nobody's expecting you to do a stand-up routine back here, <laughs> but you're going to be a neighborhood bartender Part of the interview was, do you have the personality for that? Are you? Do you feel comfortable with that? Because people are going to come in, and I want them coming in saying, you're the best bartender in the neighborhood, and they want to hang out here with you. And when that started to happen with, with the bartenders, I was very, very happy, because I agree with you. It's like you want cheers. Yes. Yeah. You, it, so then, this, yeah, yeah. then we go into the next strata, which is this very portly middle-aged woman who... Chose to go sleeveless. Now I get it. It's hot outside. She but saw what happened to you at the club. W- women, when you've got those guns, yeah. a lot of them going sleeveless. Anyway, she's standing <laughs> next to me, and I'm like, I'm looking at her, and I go, oh, this douche. God, I hate this guy. And then she goes, bartending's a really hard job. Said to you? Yes. Oh, Jesus He's Christ. alone. There's nobody but us. He's it's got nothing to job. fucking do. Anything. There's nobody there. <laughs> And he's not doing anything. And there's no blender whirling in the background or sound of martini shades. No muddling to be found. So she goes, it's a really tough job. And I go, really? Just just hanging out. And she goes, yeah, it's a tough job. And I go, but compared to what? Roofer? Like, what what are we comparing it to? Like, I, I... I like, I like when people do, that's a tough job. Why? Because you got to show up somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you have to stand for a while. No. Like, yes, th- there are many, many jobs that would fall under that fucking heading. <laughs> and then it started to get a little uh, cathartic. She was like, my brother was a bartender. Oh, boy. He was on his feet all, and I'm like, oh, until he killed himself or like Fuck OD. Out. And I was like, all right, I just want to get my fucking drink, get the fuck out Joe of here. Joe knows now. bartending can be a hard job, but in that environment... Not for this guy. In that environment, no. it's two straw cocktails, it's beer, it's wine. That's but, really but, but also, too, even if his bartending job... Let's say... Let's give the guy the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that the United... <laughs> What is it? The flight attendance club? What the hell is the it's club? Like, I don't know. The admirals club or the something <laughs> like, club. Let's say that that's the hardest bartending job in the world. In that moment, it's not. No, right. he's, he's not running there. around, and you're not going. Yo, can I get a drink? Come on, you know. And then she goes, "Dude, come on, man. He's busy. He's there's nobody I, there." I would argue. I mean, Chris, you could look it up, but it's got to be in New York. They cut you off at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. or it de- 40. It isn't depends it? on where. In the bar yeah. till 4 usually? But some bars are till 4, some are till 2, mm. some are till 12. We, we have nights where we're only allowed to stay up until 12. When so, did that start? I was there a long time ago. I, I, it's, it's boring city, but, but the short answer is when you apply for your liquor license, there are a lot of stipulations that go into why you can stay open to a certain wow. period of time. Oh, I got a lot of it. It has to do with neighbors. Cabaret law. I got. I got busted all the time moving like I was dancing and being told to stop at bars because they didn't have a cabaret license. That's insane. Have you heard of this? I, I was, know. Am I yes. that bad of a dancer? They just made that up. No, no, no. The cabaret license is real. And it's a it, and bars, I learned so much doing this. Bars use these licenses as loopholes, right? So they'll go, do you need a cabaret license? And they'll go, no. And they'll go, okay, so you're not going to have any. And they go, no, we're just going to have um, a woman who plays background music. And then the, in the thing, <laughs> yeah, the committee, <laughs> the people will be like, no, you're trying to have a DJ and you need a cabaret. Like oh. like people manipulate all the licenses. <laughs> and But wait, what happened? What happened to her brother? Did he die? <laughs> 
a hard job. She <laughs> was one of these women who looked like she'd seen a lot of death and a lot of despair. You got a, a flight of, to catch. <clears throat> and she's this, at the bar at 6 a.m. <laughs> she ordered uh, Bloody Mary and... Uh, and a champagne, so she dumped oh it. And, and by the wow. way, now the Gassy. clock's ticking, and the guy's wrestling with it because yeah, there was nothing was bottle. open, you know. And I'm like, just fucking pour me a drink. But now I got on his shit list because I asked him for a little clarity when he just went six oh five and didn't didn't look up. Did you get your drink? I did. Did you run it with you down the, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> tarmac? Oh, yeah. I, I, I found a semi-secluded corner and because I, I would look like a maniac, oh, but yes. it's like the plane was leaving okay. at that point. I was <laughs> waiting for my drink the whole time, and I was like, literally found a dark corner. Just like, oh, God. It's just like, <laughs> Poured it my yeah. mouth. Yeah, you, you poured into a go gurt too. Right, right. <laughs> uh, can't hold back. That's yeah, I poured it into a sack of empty funyuns and just <laughs> stuffed it down my pants. Washing. I always forget in New Orleans that you could just leave with it. Right. Yep. And 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 I'll be with people, and they'll, they'll they'll be like, "Let's go over here." And I'm like, "Okay, hold on, hold on, please yeah. God forbid, yeah. you City." Yeah. And they're like, "Just take it, yeah. you weirdo." And you're French like, quarter. "Oh yeah, I'm sorry." <laughs> like, but you really see it come out of you in New Orleans because th- you can just walk with it, and you're the only guy going, "No, no, no, wait, I have to." They opened it up at LAX and in many airports. If like, if you want to know the science of why. It's important that you are unable to walk around with a drink at an airport like LAX, mm-hmm. which you, you couldn't go into a bar and then just walk out, you know, into the terminal with it. During COVID, they wouldn't let you drink in the bar. So they insisted that you take it. Right. And, oh. and, and it was weird. Oh, it was yeah, like they sure. pour you a drink and they go, do not hang around here. Go out into the terminal and drink it. And then you're like... Okay, so then we're out. Everyone's out in the terminal, walking around and drinking. And then at some point, they went, "Well, COVID's over, so you cannot do that because it's too dangerous." But and I'm like, "We've just been doing it for six months, so oh, no, why? How is it dangerous now?" It, the the best summer of my life was the lockdown summer in New York of COVID, where you weren't allowed inside anywhere. But they if they let they officially let everybody walk tails. You were allowed to walk around with open container. Right. It was you didn't care about being outside because it was beautiful weather. And and you, I, dude, I'd be walking like eleven a.m. on a Tuesday to buy pants or whatever I had to go get. And you just stop and be like, I'm going to get a beer. And you're just walking with a beer. It was beautiful. What a life. I, and I, uh, I yeah. agree, but then it sort of begs the question of well, why not? Like, what's so inherently this? dangerous about this? But I want to ask you yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the New York booze laws, which mm-hmm. I find sort of bizarre and a yes. little archaic. I remember once I was, uh, I was flying in to do Howard Stern or something, and... I landed kind of late and I was like, oh, I want to get some red wine to drink and I'm going to have it in my room and I'll drink, drink my red wine. And, and I went into a bodega or a little mart or whatever. And I was like, any red wine around here? And then I found this weird rack and it had these weird bottles of red wine. And I'm like, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll buy one of these $13 jobs. And uh, I bought it and I got it in my room and it tasted like prune juice and had a little rubbing alcohol in it. And I was like, what the fuck? And then I looked at the label. I was like, wine product. <laughs> and I was like, wine product? <laughs> and, 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 just little wine anytime you <laughs> see punch, drink, or product next yeah. to you, what you're putting in your mouth, it is bad. And then it's yeah. like, this is a fortified mixture with with grapes, and and I'm like, why no wine? And then I realized, oh, you have to go to a wine shop or a supermarket, yes. I guess. Yeah. And but there are no liquor stores, or There's, like, how does it work? No, no, no. New York has liquor stores that sell both. But are they like government liquor stores? <laughs> no, they're just liquor stores because you can. You can buy beer in the supermarket. You can't buy hard alcohol in the supermarket. Pennsylvania is the word. That's because I grew up there. Pennsylvania is state stores that sell liquor and wine. And then um, beer distributors. And and you can't buy either in the supermarket anywhere except those two places. And if you want to get your friend like a nice bottle of wine for Christmas, 
you have to, in Pennsylvania, you have to go to like a, a guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can't, it's only going to go so high up at the state store. You know what I mean? Like right. there's a cap on it. But New York is, <clears throat> is much looser than that. But I guess compared to here, you're right. I mean, because here you can buy everything in the supermarket. You can and go to Trader can. Joe's and get anything you want. You can't buy wine in a bodega. You can in New York. You can buy beer in a bodega. I've never seen this wine What's product. What fortified though. wine? Well, yeah. what they did is the they Cuno? went. Every third asshole comes in here and wants a bottle of wine, and we can't sell wine, so we can sell something that sort of skirts the rules. It's yeah. not technically wine. It's a it's an alcohol product in a wine bottle, which is just. We're fucking nuts. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's got the probably the same alcohol content, but it tastes like right. shit. And <laughs> so everybody's happy. I, yeah, I think it's prop. I mean, my th- at least. <coughs> excuse me. I sorry. don't think you can go to a liquor store in Manhattan and buy a bottle of vodka though, unless it's like state sponsored or something. <laughs> that that's very Russian. Well, that I don't know because because the liquor stores in Manhattan they just look like stores. They look like you know. In in PA, they feel like like government stores. Like there's no like charm or anything to them. Mm-hmm. Like you go in and it's like we know what you're here for. And they yeah. got the big Bill Burgie cutout <laughs> saying <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> next to the beer. Yeah, there's yeah there's like Frank Rizzo posters. <laughs> it's but yeah, it's like but it's like you know fluorescent lights right and cheap linoleum and it's and it's those. Those beige metal shelves, right? You know? Right, and it's that's it. It's like here's this section, here's this. It's New like York, a prison canteen. Yeah, like New York, they have names and stuff. Yeah, that, you know, be called such and such as liquor, or you know, whatever. what is Chris? Can you find what that bodega wine rack is and uh, what the fuck that thing is? Oh look, I, I found wine product. So, yeah, yeah, wine product is a beverage containing wine with added juice flavoring. Water, citric acid, sugar, and carbon dioxide. Jesus, um, Capri Sun. It, it does contain wine, but it also contains a whole lot of other things. And the other stipulation for wine product is that it has to be under six percent ABV. It's all sugar. I so would be have the, a beer. Yeah. I, is there anyone on the fucking city council could just go? What the fuck are we doing? Just some people want a, gla- a bottle of red wine at the bodega. They're walking back to their apartment. Is this possible? Bizarre. It's got to be something to do. I do. As you keep explaining it, like I'm. I feel like it must. The state must have a hand in the liquor stores, which would, to me, then make sense as to why they're saying, "No, no, no, the bodegas can't sell what we have because right. then they're cutting in on our, our action." Right. So I guess maybe that's what it is, but it's it's odd. It's weird to maybe me. Maybe that's why that guy went behind the counter the other day. Yeah. Maybe he found out that was a wine product <laughs> instead of a fine. Li- from a vineyard right. in in, in, uh, in uh, you know Northern California or Fortified something. Dragos. I don't know the full case, but yeah. that could have very well led to that. Yeah. Wine, so wine product is like that's like Boone's Farm, right? Or like Mad Dog I, or something. Like Charles and James. I, I, but but it's 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 detuned because it's got less alcohol in it than the stuff that's yeah. pumped up. Well, you're talking about as a malt beverage. Well, oh. did you ever see this? I, I only ever saw this in New York. And again, I, I, I understood more about what it was once we had to apply because they have, they have a beer and liquor license and then, the, or I'm sorry, they have a beer and wine license and then they have a full liquor. liquor license. And when people can only get the beer and wine, they sell mixed drinks that are made with these malt yeah. liquor things. Yeah. And it tastes like. Shit. You'll see that a lot out here. It's just, yeah. I mean, in, place, in places here. that don't have uh, liquor yeah. licenses, they'll make a like margarita you want a, with You want a sake soju. daiquiri? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, yes. no, I want a fucking real drink. <laughs> yeah. Or you're like, can I have a whiskey on the rocks? And yeah, they're pouring dyed sake. I mean, it's disgusting. <laughs> but it's also, like, I, I always say this. is Do we need to please... Our alien overlords that are going to kill us if we don't comply to their crazy whims. It's 2022. Like, can we just Who's have this for? fucking stores? And, and you know what I always want to say to New York and, and Pennsylvania? It's like, look, if we're doing it in California, right. you can do it. Because right. we have a fucking rule for everything. Yeah. We're the most regulated pussy state in the fu- in the fucking union. And if we've decided you can go to a Trader Joe's and get a bottle of scotch and a beer, then there's no reason in this modern era why you can't do it, too. That's that's what's so, that's what struck me as so odd. Like, when I lived here, 
that that the that the supermarket had all that stuff because I was like I don't know they seem pretty clamped down on a lot of shit out here but weed and and you can get a, a handle of vodka at the liquor store it's a free for all well you know it, it reminds me like when they 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 talk about these people that were in the Soviet Union their whole life and then they would go to a supermarket and they'd see a whole row of bread and yeah. muffins and like break down in tears. I could imagine a booze version of that. Like you've lived in Pennsylvania my whole life, then I went to the Vons, <laughs> I walked into the booze section and I just fell Draws to the ground. Dude, the ground. I'm not even kidding. When I first moved here, it was like I go to Vons and it was like it was like that scene in leaving Las Vegas. Like <laughs> I was, like, playing, putting yeah. bottles in. I, mean, I was like, I'm going to ha- build an entire bar today <laughs> at Vaughn's. It was all like so cheap. Like, and you'd go home and you'd be like, I have a full bar ready to go. Like, it was wild. I had never seen anything like that. What's the best sandwich? Well, don't um, qualify it. I won't. I don't won't. tell me which. This is my personal. I don't share. I just want you to declare. Give us one hot, one what cold. What the best oh, yeah. hot and cold we, we is. We only do cold. Give us one mm-hmm. cold. <laughs> one cold. Yeah, I'll give you so one no cold. cheese sticks. No, I, I won't. One of the things we did with the menu, I said, I, if we're going to serve anything that's really traditional, we have to put some sort of twist on it. Mm-hmm. And there's plenty of places to get a cheese steak. So I, I didn't want to do a cheese steak. So best hoagie. Best hoagie. Uh, like out the straight up and down, the dad is the straight up and down Italian hoagie. It's got the meats on it that I grew up with. Genoa salami, ham cappy, which is not gabagol. (laughs) Gabagol. Those are two different things. And um, and, uh, and it's got mortadella on it. Provolone cheese, tomato, onion. We don't put lettuce on any sandwiches. I hate lettuce on a sandwich. Uh, Salt, pepper, oregano. We don't put vinegar on any sandwiches. I I I had rules. I forbade certain things. His taste dictate the sandwiches. (laughs) Good. Salt and pepper oil. Yeah, olive oil, salt, pepper, oregano. And then now Mm. the sandwiches. So I would say that's to me, that's the. That's, yeah. That was the corner. Any stuff. other, any mustard, any mayo, any other spreads on. We that? have some stuff coming that's going to have mustard on it. Some mm-hmm. of the sandwiches have mayo, mm-hmm. um, but the sandwiches that I that in my opinion needed a vinegar flavor, we put hot or sweet cherry peppers on those. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. So why nice. dump liquid yeah. shit all over the thing, and that's just going to make the bread soft and soggy yeah. when you could actually add something to it that has. That's a a thing that in, that enhances the sandwich. What's it called when it's like in that big jar and it's peppers and pepperoncini? Yeah, no, it's like a it's that, but it's like it chopped up in a spread. Maybe it's just out here. It's just hot pepper spread. Yeah, yeah, that's made from cherry peppers, but we put pickled oh. hot cherry peppers like on topping slices. On? No, mm. it's not. It's gonna drive me insane. Do you do pe- at it. does mm. the chef does the, do people get pe- those breads are the best breads on the planet? We bake the bread every day. We bake oh. our own bread every morning. Uh, nice. We worked for two months on oh, the bread. Oh, man, like right. Subway. Good stuff. That's what a sandwich on <laughs> Yeah. I'll do white. He'll do the wheat. We- <laughs> do people get yeah. in trouble for trying to sub out something? We don't allow substitutions. I knew it. I Good. knew it. Yeah. Good. You can omit something you can't substitute. So if you have like a cheese allergy or right. something or you're lactose, you know, yeah. you can take the cheese off. But We don't want no you fucking losers here anyway. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. look, just just... Just for the name of, of, of like brevity, which is like, there's nothing worse than getting behind someone who's physically building a new sandwich in front of you, you know, like, I'll have those yeah. parts and let's yeah. Frankenstein some of this together yeah. with that. That's a like, come on, baby. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to go, I went number four yeah. or daddy and sandwich. And I'm going to go step aside. <laughs> you know, these are the people that are, they get in front of you at the ATM and they're moving money offshore. And it's like, just get your fucking 20 bucks, gun. Yeah. I got a life to lead here. <laughs> I, went, I went to a subway. Do you know Will Sylvance, the stand up comedian? No, I don't he's think a New so. York guy. Uh, I went to a subway once with him. We were on the road and we stopped at a subway. And I got a sandwich and I put so much shit on it that in the middle of me making the sandwich, he goes, God damn, Joe, this shit's supposed to be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes to the lady, he goes, Can you throw some cookies on that motherfucker, too? <laughs> Jewish comedian? <laughs> yeah, Jewish guy. <laughs> Jardinara Jar- is what I was trying to think of. Oh, Jardinara. that's the yeah. name. All right, let me hit a spot, and then we'll uh, break and hit some news. Concrete, your body makes half the creatine it needs. Another half comes from the diet, but of course, uh, most American diets are low in creatine-rich foods. Concrete, patented creatine. HCL is the favorite creatine of elite, well-informed athletes. The 
number one, bioavailable creatine, and the only microdose in creatine, just one small scoop per 100 pounds. So if you're a couple hundred pounds, put two in there, put it in that shake bottle, shake it up. It tastes good. Creatine is required for functional energy in every cell. Your brain uses about 20% of the creatine in your body. I use this stuff. Drew swears by it. Immune cells need it to protect you. Heart cells need it to pump. Lung cells need it to breathe. It is concrete. Right, Dawson? Take control of your health, both body and mind. Build a better you with concrete. Register now at con createcom slash podcast. That's con-cret.com slash podcast for a chance to win a $500 Walmart Visa gift card. Available now online and in-store at Walmart. Concrete is truly life-changing in performance now to enhancing. All right. Uh, Gina is going to do the news. We'll take a break. Joe's going to hang. And we'll do that right after this. It should, uh, it should be noted that I am sleep deprived and um, jet lagged. But when I heard uh, Joe DeRosa was coming on, I said, Joe DeRosa, that guy makes furniture? And Chris <laughs> said, no. And I said, I think Joe DeRosa is a f- He's a comedian, but he makes furniture. And he said, nope. He makes sandwiches. <laughs> like, Jesus, you know? And I said, I, I can't think straight. I don't know what day it is, but I, there's, I, I think Joe DeRosa, I'm almost positive he's a, makes furniture, too. He's a comedian <laughs> who makes furniture. And he's like, I, I'm punching in the computer. He doesn't make <laughs> furniture. And I'm like, there's a guy whose name it's it's it sounds it's the same name he makes he's a comedian makes furniture and I was like going out of my mind and I forgot about it and then I ran into Chris and he's like John Darista ah <laughs> Joe DeRosa makes sandwiches John Darista makes furniture both good guys both be comedians friends with. and both work with their hands J- John wow. Darista he's he, is he an older guy yes yes he had a sitcom I think I. I yeah. I think, yeah, or John Deresta or Deresta, yeah. but I he, I I could not feel I could not the Joe DeRosa John Deresta thing just got me on to I like woodwork. But when so. I first moved into New York, when I first moved to New York, people would go, "Oh yeah, you had that sitcom." <laughs> I was right. like, "What? Good, I'm not the only person." <laughs> and then I look it up, and it was like I look up this guy, and he was like 50, and he had a sitcom when he was like 30. And I was like, you well, thought I had a sitcom 20 years ago? I was 12. Well, that's what solved, <laughs> what, what solved it is I said, wait a minute, how old is Joe? And he said 44, and I said, no, no, no it can't be the same guy. But there is somebody out there who yeah. almost shares the same name, Damn. who's a comedian who builds furniture with nice. his son. There's a, there's a comedian named Joe DeVito, mm-hmm. also in New York. This is a true story. When I was first starting out, I drove from New York down to South Jersey to headline a show. And I got to the club and I go, hey, I'm Joe DeRosa. And they go, yeah, can we help you? And I go, <laughs> what do you mean? I'm, I'm headlining the show tonight. And they go, oh, shit, we thought we booked Joe DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we booked the funny Joe. <laughs> yeah. no, we just got the one that's willing to travel. Well, you're here. Well, thanks for the sandwich, but that's yeah. not going to get you on stage. But exactly. <laughs> I should start making furniture. That's a smart thing to do. Was Was John in a sitcom? And it was the, called Deresta. That's nice. right. Yeah, a short-lived UPN sitcom from '98 to '99 called well, Deresta. Wow, there and it is. It got even crazier because not only was he like at the time like 25 years older than me, or, st- or he still would be. <laughs> that doesn't change. But the the sitcom. Was about him being like a cop, and I was like, "You, th- I, I was twenty two. I'm like, you thought right. I was a cop where I played like an old cop." Like- Listen, I was crossing the street. I was crossing PCH two months ago, and six months after Norm Macdonald died, I still got the "Hey Norm." It's like people don't focus. Yeah, you know that's time stands still. Yes. All right. Sorry, Gina. Well, let's talk about comedy, or, or at least uh, the comedy that almost wasn't. A sold-out Dave Chappelle show was canceled on Wednesday at the last minute after a firestorm began to brew online about uh, his past jokes about the trans community. The Minnesota venue called First Avenue pulled the plug on the event just hours before it was supposed to begin. Move Chappelle to a nearby theater. This is the whole Instagram post. I'm going to read it to you. 
The Dave Chappelle show tonight at First uh, Avenue has been canceled and is moving to Varsity Theater. To staff, artists, and our community, we hear you and we are sorry. First off, fuck everyone in every community. I'm so tired of you and your community and how you feel about your fucking community. No one gives a shit. We are sorry. We know you must hold we, we must hold ourselves to the highest standards and we know we let you down. We're just a block we are not just a black box with people in it and we understand that First Avenue is not just a room but meaningful beyond our walls. The First Avenue team and you uh, have worked hard to make our venues the safest spaces in the country and we will continue like, with in that. In terms mission. of fire codes? Yeah, I don't think so. Like I think just emotional. Mechanical buildings like it's a fucking comedian telling jokes. It's doesn't need to be safe, you uh, fucking tards. Also, too, like, why would you ever want a venue for the arts to be safe? Right. Do you know what I mean? It's like right. so. So think about how much that excludes. So these paintings, these 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 classic paintings that are worth millions of dollars, could never be hung in here mm. because they show certain nudity that could be offensive to people. Yeah. Or it it's that's such a wide net. Yeah, I, I just I can't stand it. It's a very it. slippery it's, slope, yeah. and it's also eighteen people who are unemployable, who are fucking bitter about their stepdad molesting them, on struggling with their sexuality, on fucking line, speaking for the community. They're like, I, so you fuck you. I, it, 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 well, by the way, don't go. Uh, look, if yeah. he does that, or Ben Shapiro's going to Stanford, don't fucking go to his lecture then, you yeah. assholes, and stop caving, everybody. Speaking That's of, what perpetuates yeah. it. Speaking of which, they apologize to the staff, which indicates, you know, maybe someone on the staff voiced up or whatever. How many other staff members are, are pissed and are not getting Paid that that, that would have been work. a big night, yeah. Well, let me just yeah. read you one more sentence from this. We believe in diverse voices. Oh, hold I, on. I knew you'd like Every this. one of these <laughs> motherfucking... Look, when, when uh, the Washington... General, admirals? Generals? General? No, the Redskins. <laughs> Redskin, they're the... Fucking Washington the Cleveland Guardians? Commanders? Avengers. Commanders. They're the commanders. Oh, the, the Washington yeah, sorry, the Commanders. Name, yeah. yeah. When they find Jack Del Rio for whatever he said about uh, about the insurrection, they find him a hundred grand, and then went. We believe we've created an environment where people are free. You can't fucking find people or yeah. shut down people's shows and then come in with your chicken shit. Here's who we are. Themselves. Here's who who's who, here's who we are. You have to act yeah. like who you are, bitches. Not do something really shitty and Orwellian mm -hmm. and shut everyone down and then go ahead and give us your who's who, here's what we believe. Yeah. But yeah, read it anyway, Gina, because yeah. it's sickening. We believe in diverse voices and the freedom of artistic expression. Oh, you but, do. but in honoring that, we lost sight of the impact this would have. We know there are some who will not agree with this decision. You are welcome to send feedback as well. Uh, they lost track of what? It's either it's either free speech or not. That's it. It's just so nuts, man. It's just so. It's it, but you're absolutely right. This idea of diversity only means a certain n number of voices. Right. You know what I mean? Like yes. It's 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 really really crazy. And I really that really resonated with what you said about the people because I got so so the the, a thing happened here in L.A. once. Where this kid, the, the Proud Boys were hanging out at a bar, and then this kid brought a bunch of people over to the bar to confront them. And the kids that went in, who supposedly were on the right side of history, were the ones that caused the stir up. And it's like, and, and created all the commotion. And then they got the bar shut down for like a week. And it's like, dude... Do you know how many like single moms and like people that need this goddamn job so you could go down there and get your little 15 minutes on the news that you made a guy in a MAGA hat, you know, uh, you shut the bar down. It's like, it really bothers me, man. That really And if the bar didn't me. want them there, the bar would have handled it. You know what? Well, this is funny because they kept saying, what do you, there was video of it, and they're like, what do you plan to do? They're screaming, and the bar manager is going, what do you want me to do? <laughs> they weren't doing anything. Yeah. And it's like, I'm sorry, I missed on the training video <laughs> right. where it says, when when the Proud Boys come into your bar, here's how you handle it. It's like there is no, yeah. what, the, what, what is everybody talking about? I got a new term for that. Hmm. Toxic righteousness. Yes. You're right to not like the Proud Boys, but to get the whole place shut down and, and you know, paychecks gone for a week or whatever, that's taken a bit too far. But yeah. that being said, I played the Varsity Theater a few times. So I was like, oh. 
Well, we're sharing the same venue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Me too. Your cast. You probably went to the varsity theater. <laughs> Where what what town? Minnesota. Minneapolis. Yeah, I remember, yes. I remember going there. Yes. It was a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. Yeah. All it's right. sloppy seconds to Chappelle, but for us, it's well, the us, pinnacle it's a of a career. Yeah. And how, but how great, is, how great is it for the Varsity Theater, too? Oh. They're like, uh, wait, yeah. you guys don't want the show. Sh- yeah. I wonder what if they had it? to shuffle the deck. Like, hey, Shanana, bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We, we didn't really move any tickets anyway, but we'll get you. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, exactly. we'll give you your rider. Exactly. Bowser, you get the rider. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, guys, tell Bowser we said go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come back. We got something else happening. Well, we have some good news in Los Angeles for once. We talk a lot on this show about fentanyl and how it's literally killing everybody. Yes. Uh, the LA DEA has seized approximately one million fake pills containing fentanyl over mm-hmm. in Inglewood. Uh, this record-breaking bust is the largest seizure of fentanyl pills the DEA has ever made in California. The bust is believed to be linked to... The Sinaloa cartel. What? I know you're shocked. Mm-hmm. Um, the seized fake pills were intended for retail distribution and have an estimated value of <laughs> retail. Yeah, about twenty million dollars. <laughs> big box stores. Criminal drug networks in me- in Mexico are mass producing less illicit fentanyl and fake pills pressed with fentanyl and are designed to look exactly like prescription pills down to the shape, size, color, stamping. You cannot tell the difference. Jesus, it's all coming over the border. And we're fucking obsessed with those guys hit those those mounted border police hit those Haitians with the whip, the whip. It was awful. Like we're they're fucking laughing their ass off. We're doing nothing at the border. We're fucking trying to create something that didn't fucking even happen. Remember that? Oh, yeah. they did. They were all yeah, cleared. It wasn't, it wasn't a whip either. No, right? everyone was cleared. Although we're not getting the big report on that. It was a lot of reporting on them right. beating Haitians at the thing. The fucking cartels are just laughing their ass off because the fucking border's a sieve. Tunneling all the way. We're not going to talk about it because we're not, we don't want to talk about all the ODs and all the fucking fentanyl and it's all a poor's border and we're, instead we're pissed off I think at they said, uh, horseback. God, when they suspended the horseback thing, they did a whole investigation. The horses right. were fired. Yeah. <laughs> the, the most yeah. insidious thing they did was they did a whole investigation on those guys. They found nothing. And because the fucking government doesn't want to walk it back because they were all on the news going, this is the worst, this is horrible. They're going, well, we're still looking into some administrative stuff. And you're still going to punish the poor guys for their time card was bent or something. What? I, I have a question for you, if, if I may. By the way, Ed Calderon, who's the expert on all this shit, is coming in on Monday, for oh. so people know. But go ahead. What? What? Continue. What? I feel like you've been asked this probably a bunch. What makes you still live out here? Because what th- this is the reason I, I left that every twenty minutes. I couldn't. I cu- I was like, it was so. It was. It was the. It was the. You know, it's the polar. It's so liberal. It's conservative. It drove me crazy. Right. Yeah. I couldn't. That's interesting. It's so liberal. They've shut the beaches down, and they'll arrest you if you go on the beach yeah, during yeah. COVID. It's that liberal. Yeah. It's so liberal. They don't like school choice. It's so liberal. You have to wear a mask outdoors. Like we're so liberal. We're oppressive. It's it's bad when San Francisco is looking edgy right. compared to LA. Like so, what what keep? How do you not lose your mind? You know uh, what I, mean? I have lost my mind. I do lose my mind. I continue to lose my mind. I have. I've said it once. I've, uh, I've said it a thousand times. My kids will graduate high school in two years, and I will pull up to attend their graduation in a U-Haul. That's how we're going to do it. Brian, we got to start making other plans. That makes sense. I'm not even going to leave it. I'm just going to get binoculars. I'm going to sit shotgun, give a toot when the girl gets her sheepskin there. And and then that's it. Then it's off. And you're just out. Yeah. You know know the scariest thing about being from L.A. is when when you say to people, like, don't you want to get out of L.A.? Like, there's, there's, there's a difference between... Going somewhere because it's attractive and getting out. Mm -hmm. Like when people Mm go, where do you want to go? It's like, Nashville. I don't know. Throw a dart at them. Texas, Florida. Like it doesn't doesn't really matter. I'm leaving. L.A. and California used to be, we're attracting. People are coming to California. They're coming to California. Now they're just leaving and it's not because they fell in love with Montana. It's just because California fucked things up so badly, they're just leaving. Yeah, it was when I left, 
and I'm single. I don't have kids or anything. So like it was it was easier obviously for me to just leave. But when I left, it, it was it was and it, it was tough because I was saying to people. I remember I, I I was in a really dry patch in my career, and I did not have a lot of accessible income. And I was like, and I kept saying, I feel like it's Iraq. I have no I have no exit strategy. I don't know how I'm going to get out of here. Like I came for all these things, and all those things are over now. And now I got to leave. And like you said. When you don't have, you know, you're not being pulled somewhere. There's no, you know, you're just like, I got to just get out of here. Which is, it's it's like, it's sort of the difference between falling in love with a coworker mm-hmm. while in a relationship or just being in an abusive relationship <laughs> where you're like, I just got to get the fuck out of the apartment and find somewhere to flop. That's yeah. that's what yeah. California is turning right, into. Right, right. Or, or falling, the difference between falling in love with a coworker or... I th- I'm going to try to fuck a coworker. Yeah, you know what I mean. You're like, no, 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 no. That's going to be tough. <laughs> All right, let me hit a quick spot before Gina's uh, next story, which is BlindsGalore.com, family owned and run for over 20 years, over two million windows and counting. The first place to buy custom window treatments online, blind shades, shutters, drapes, even motorized coverings that connect to your smartphone. Hey, they'll have a remote too, and you just charge them up. You don't have to run wire to them. Battery lasts for a while on an overnight charge. Just take the measurements and design it online, and they have a visualizer so you can see what it looks like before you squeeze the trigger. Right on the screen before you squeeze the trigger on the buy. Their expert customer care team will help you for through every step of the way, either online or over the phone. I have them in my studio. I have them in my edit bays. I have my home. Free samples, free shipping, free expertise. Doesn't get any better than that. It's Blinds Galore, right, Doff? Oh, right, Dawson? BlindsGalore.com makes it easy to get the high-quality designer blinds and shades you've always wanted in your home, all at a great price. Order your free samples today to get started at BlindsGalore.com and let them know that Adam sent you. That's BlindsGalore.com. We got a couple more Yeah, sure. All right, great. Well, let's do another follow-up on a story that I believe you broke right here on the show, Adam. Mm. Uh, remember the story of the trans inmate who impregnated two female inmates consensually, by the way. I think that's important. <laughs> um, there's an update on, on this person. They've transferred them to a men's prison after being placed on suicide watch. Uh, 27-year-old Demi Minor has now been transferred to a vulnerable inmates unit at Garden State Youth Correctional Facility, which houses young adults. Minor is serving a 30-year sentence for manslaughter. Uh, the state has agreed to uh, to house most trans prisoners according to their gender identity and to provide gender-affirming care under what a settlement What state is this in? Like New yeah. Jersey or something? Let me double check. Um, Chris will look. That's this, fine. New Jersey. This woman had said that uh, she was harassed and assaulted by both staff and fellow this inmates. This woman who entered prison as a dude? Yeah. Okay. She transitioned in prison? Not even really a transition. Just declared. Like just started identifying. And impregnating inmates. (laughs) So, so, so... At the time, he went. I just want to make sure I get this straight because I heard the story, but I didn't know when. I didn't know I'll do. He went in as a he, said, "I'm a woman now." Then they put him, her, into a women's prison. Oh no, prison. they put him or her, yeah, <laughs> into the into, women's no, prison. into a men's prison. But he was being like harassed and stuff, right? I don't know, but he ended up in a women's That's prison, I mean, and yeah. then he impregnated two of them. <laughs> Now, look, here's the way I roll. Those two kids, the two offspring, mm-hmm. they've got to be guards for at least the first five years of their life. <laughs> a, they know the system sure. better than anybody. Inherent. Number one. Number two, I want some of my fucking taxpayer money back. They work for free as guards for five years. That's my policy. I, I could run on that platform. Yeah. Strict but fair. Yeah. I can't argue it. It's logical. The, all right. <laughs> Here's here's what here's the problem with super progressive notions. They never work because they can't work because it, this kind of shit is like, well, if you identify as a woman, then you should be able to swim with the other women and beat the fuck out of them in the freestyle. Like this is where it goes. It breaks down. We're gonna we're gonna defund the police. We're gonna get a community based police. Hey, I've never fucking run around shooting each other now. Right. I, and I love that the notion is awesome. Right. The execution is impossible because that's you're dealing with humans. They exploit everything, and that's how it works. Well, yeah. we have we have 
it on record as the LAPD saying, don't wear flashy shit because you are going to get rolled in broad daylight. Like, right. that's the new decree. It's, uh, it's Jersey Copland. Yes. Uh, it's Stallone? It's, yeah. Please. There's the... there's. I just one. wanted to see a chubby Stallone. I was like, I've seen so many he's, roided out Stallone yeah. movies. I just want to see a fucking he, dad bod on Stallone He's in this once. new thing. He's like gorgeous still. He's like <laughs> it's 76. He's an Adonis still. I know. <clears throat> anyway, there's that scene where Keitel yells at him. And he goes, you came in here pretty with a plan, but it was the plan of a boy. <laughs> right. Boys don't think things through. You know? <laughs> and it's like, I always think of that with stuff like this. Because I'm like, guys... The notion is, is, as you said, the notion is great. You have to have a plan. There has to be a way to execute. <laughs> no, here's the thing. We're going to shut down yeah. nuclear power plants. We're going to stop fracking. We're going to shut every pipeline. We're going to put these oil companies out of business. How okay, do we get and <laughs> yeah. you have some fusion generator that we've not heard of, or <laughs> no? Yeah. By the way, shutting shit down, defunding shit, putting uh, dudes in with chicks. That's that's a proclamation. It's not a plan. The plan is then now what and now what is we'll yeah. we'll buy our we'll buy our oil from the worst be, worst players right. on the planet. Well, and it's and it's like you said, people take advantage. So what happens with every cause is every single person goes no. The the most extreme rule in this new game we're playing now has to apply to me too, even though I'm not over there. No pun intended. Me too is a great example when people start saying. If a guy kissed you and you didn't want it, it's the same thing. Right. And, and you're like, it's not the same thing. And if you don't start to create some rules and boundaries here, it's going to be a shit show, which it did become. And then right. that's why the time's up. They found out they were all vacationing and wherever the fuck <laughs> they were going with all the money. But um, it's the same thing with this. It's like, guys, if you can't have the discussion of there are levels to transitioning. Mm hmm. And it is something that can be taken advantage of. For instance, a guy just going, I'm a woman now. Put me in the women's prison so I can now have sex with women. It's, I mean, what are we talking about here? It's so nuts. And also, it, they're in there for something. In this case, manslaughter. So they're not uh -huh. virtuous folks. Like he says on his honor. And his, his mother, Latifah's honor, that he would never, and like if you insult him, then his seconds are going to contact your seconds and he'll yeah. see you at the handball court at sunrise. Uh, like, yeah. now he, the, we've established that these people will work outside of the perimeters of society. Yeah. It's, yeah, I yeah. I love that anybody walking down the street screaming out loud at God. Has, is going to like glove slap you if you yes. insult them. It's like it's oh the honor God. system. Yeah. All right, one more, Gina. All right, well, let's finish on a absolutely vile note. Um, Velveeta has teamed up with the BLT Restaurant Group mm -mm. Um, oh, no. for a drink. Oh, oh! Go ahead and put it up. It's called the Listen Velveeta up, Veltini. <laughs> it on. is a oh. martini made with Velveeta infused. Vodka and garnished with either Velveeta stuffed olives or Velveeta shells and cheese. The Veltini will run fifteen dollars. Think of this for your bar, and is available <laughs> at five BLT restaurants. Thank God, I don't think we have those here. Uh, like uh, BLT steak. Never BLT, heard of yeah. one of those. Yeah, Washington, Charlotte, New York, Chicago. Uh, if you don't live near one of these locations, you can. Um, Either have it shipped to you for forty nine ninety five, or you this, can make it yourself. This was created by the lovers of the Apple Teeny to get the pressure taken <laughs> off them. Like, come on, fucking chicken shit is this? How old? Are they? <laughs> the other guy's drinking a Veltini down at the end. Why don't you fucking go talk to him, dude? And then they can enjoy their Apple Teeny in peace. That's probably it's, it. It's a ruse. Yeah. This, this will also this will be the first infused vodka ever. Where the flavor is plenty. Every time you have infused vodka, you're like, it doesn't taste yeah, anything right. like cherries. Right, right. <laughs> Joe probably knows, Adam, I don't know if you know this, the big new teeny that been one second over the world, the espresso martini. Yeah. Oh, I know. Big time. Keep you alert. I, I, it's, it's so many calories. and it's, it's Yeah, it's, it's a milkshake. It's also, so it's, good. It's, <laughs> it is really good. Yeah. It is good. Look, look, there's nothing better than a, than a malted or, yeah. or many offerings yeah. at, the, yeah. at the ice cream place. But we're at a steakhouse, and we're here to 
eat some meat and do some drinking. Like, go with a nice gin martini. And I, I, and this includes white Russians, I don't abide by dairy mixed with alcohol. Like, you want to make that milkshake an adult milkshake? No, I do not. <laughs> Are we, uh, can we agree, as long as we're, you know, we've, we've, we've d- decided to craft a booze-themed show, um, the martini. Mm-hmm. Should there be a standard glass and a standard practice, which is... If you go to certain steakhouses, this is my favorite, they shake it up, they pour it, and they leave the little shaker next to you, and that's whatever's left. It drives me nuts when there's an inch at the bottom. It's like, there we go, and the guy throws it in the thing. You alluded to my celebrity encounter, which we'll get to in maybe a show or two. I went to a restaurant that did that. That was the restaurant I was at. They gave me the extra. Yeah, right. Nice. Some will leave the thing. Yep. In New York, I got one. The guy poured it into a separate little beaker and put it there. I was like, all right, I like where your head's at. Then there was the one. But there's also the glass. Like sometimes you go and you order a martini, which, you know, is 20 bucks, 25 bucks. That kind of depends where you are. They can get even more. They give that little itty bitty thing. And you're like, I was kind of picturing the bigger one. And they're like, no, we use the itty bitty one. I'm like. I want to factor that in. I appreciate you pouring five ounces as opposed to six. Right. I kind of want a standard Mm -hmm. glass and a standard we'll put it or we'll do it or it'll come up to here. Sometimes you order one, it's in the little glass, it's it's a quarter inch from the top, and you're like, there's not much in there at all. Well, yeah, and just logistically, a- as shaky as I, I got some butterfingers, I'm terrified of holding martini glasses, because that is just a spill waiting to happen. Well, the worst is when everyone wants to toast, and you're oh, like, hold no, on, get away, this. get away from <laughs> the booze. Let me get it off first. <laughs> I'm going to put my hands behind my back, I'm going to stand up on this seat and I'm going to slurp it without <laughs> making contact with it then we can we're not yes, going to yes. sling it like pow in exactly. the middle of the table that's 18 bucks of booze you just dropped that's yes. exactly what I'm talking about I have about. a question though about this, this I think it looks disgusting yeah. don't get me wrong but I was out I went to Taylor's the other night with my buddy and every time, and he got a martini. And every time he gets a martini, he gets the blue cheese olives, which I think are it's disgusting. It makes me gag. Mm. So I'm is glad this you said that? Does this sort of make sense? Like because people do the- have cheese in a martini. Like I mean, it's the it's worst synthesized. Cheese. It's the worst. I you know maybe the blue cheese martini uh, olive is like a stepping stone type mm. drug I to get you to the <laughs> Yes. It's vile. Yeah. Oh, this place was three doors down from your hotel, Chris. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really bummed. I totally would have. I totally would have went and tried <laughs> I it. The BLT never. Steakhouse. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I've never heard of one until <laughs> me staying there. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's where that's where my Uber would pick me up because that, oh, that was like God. the landmark over there. But yeah, I, I t- and I did get wow. martinis in. Um, when I would get like like at the sushi counter, and the the sushi chef just wanted to cheers me every single time, Adam. You're totally right. And, and I, I used. I do the up with the non. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I was like, oh, no, bring it Clean in. Peter, it's bad like, luck. It's bad luck. We can't just give the look in the hand. We have to physically yeah. make contact with yeah. this glass. Yeah. It's yeah. the worst. Do you, did you, have you had the uh, mac and cheese ice cream? No. What? I was doing... It was on, I was on the, uh, the podcast, We Might Be Drunk, with Mark <laughs> Norman and Sam Morell. It's a great show. And they were like, we're trying this today. And they brought it in, and we tried it, and I gagged. I spit it into the trash can. It was, just, it was the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted. What, was it like a sweet ice cream with, with noodles in it? No, it's just flavored like mac and cheese. Ew. There's no, there's no yeah. noodles or cheese in it. But no, it's the color of... Uh, sherbet. <laughs> It's the well. It looks like mac and cheese color, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and it tastes like if you mixed the powder of mac and cheese with vanilla ice cream. It's literally what it I, I'm me like. Sad. See, my thing is, there's fucking ice cream. There's 40 flavors. Just pick one, and then there's mac and cheese if you want it. I don't like all the infusion. I don't like all the crossover. It's like Great. it's like me saying, I got this new car. It's a it's a it's a good car. It's part donkey. It's got some donkey. It's got hints of like donkey and mule in it, but it's mainly a car. It's, it's fucking get a good car. There's cars. You get one. Yeah. There's food. There's martinis. There's ice cream. Stop experimenting. Yeah, there is a very upscale ice cream chain in Los Angeles. That does great regular ice cream, and but then gets a little crazy with like the you know the mint and the rose water, and you're like, eh. and then they have a goat cheese and olive. Yeah. Can you imagine not knowing what you are biting into and taking a big spoonful of that? Disgusting, fucking disgusting. horrific. 
That's All disgusting. right. Someone, oh, Chris had Grey Poupon ice cream the other day. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with you? Why? I, well, just to try, because my friend had it in his I've freezer. I've seen the commercial. Excuse me. <laughs> are you retarded? <laughs> <laughs> I was because I yeah I, I definitely took a bite it, and it had like salted pretzels in there as well to kind of cut it but uh, it was then, it was too weird I, there's too no weird. way you could finish Briny. a whole bowl of it you could have a bite and go okay I, I get it it's, too it's not weird. terrible but oh. you wouldn't want a bowl of it it's a weird logic chain where they're like well pretzels go with ice cream so and pretzels go with mustard so mustard must go with ice cream yeah, it's, yeah. A yeah. plus C equals Q yeah there's a great Steely Dan let's say pretzel logic let's bring mm. it home Gina Grad you got it I'm Gina Grad and that's the news. I'm going to try to fuck a co-worker. Gina, Gina. That was the news with Gina Grad. Well, last but not least, there's X chair. Many of us spend more time in our office chair than in our cars or bed. So get a good office chair. <clears throat> so important to invest in the right chair with the right level of support and comfort. So you can be the most productive. X chair is my favorite place to sit for any reason. I'm sitting on one right now. Had an X share years ago in my office, long before they even came on as a sponsor. X share's patented dynamic variable lumbar or DVL offers the ultimate customized support. X share can even give a massage or heat you up or cool you down. And now, thanks to X share's new FS360 armrest, I can even adjust the armrest to the perfect position. Treat yourself, you deserve it. X chair, right, Dawson? Go to xchairadam.com now. That's the letter X, chair, A-D-A-M.com, or call 844-4X-CHAIR for $100 off your order. X chair is a 30-day guarantee of complete comfort, and you can finance your purchase for as little as $30 a month. xchairadam.com. I should say that Joe is going to be at uh, the Atlantic City Comedy Club. That's August 12th and 13th. Then off to San Diego, the American Comedy Co. And that is September 1st. Through the third, the sandwich shop, of course. Joey Rose's. Man, that stuff looked so, good. So Thank good. you. Podcast Taste Buds as well, available wherever you listen to finer podcasts. And shoot him a tweet at Joe DeRosa Comedy. Thanks, Joe. Guys, thank you so much. It's so much fun. Appreciate Huge it. Huge fan ever since that 90s sitcom you're in, and we finally got you <laughs> into the studio. So it's all my honor, brother. Thank you. So until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Gina Grant and Paul Bryan and Joe DeRosa saying mahalo. It's not enough that you look like somebody. You need to look like yeah. the Down Syndrome version <laughs> you know what's, of that. You know what's tough? I just look like Down Syndrome. <laughs> Just Down Syndrome, <laughs> which is a real bummer. <laughs> and then Haley Joel Osment looks like you with Down Syndrome. Yeah. So, yeah. I look like your handler. I'm like he's very functional. <laughs> <laughs>